welcome everybody. We're live worldwide. This is the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We're in week number 20, over 140 back-to-back -back episodes, which is pretty amazing. And uh, thanks so much for all the love and the support and everybody who has been sharing the links and tagging each other and just having a great time with us here on our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We've had extraordinary guests from the worlds of Broadway and Hollywood, television, music, film, health and wellness, science, culinary arts, uh, nature, sports, inspiration, spirituality, and so much more. And I have an extraordinary guest joining me in just a moment, my dear friend Rita Cosby. Now, of course, you know her as an Emmy-winning journalist, television host, best-selling author, anchor, and somebody who's very passionate, passionate about life, passionate about people, very passionate about community, about veterans, about our country, and about the world. And she is chairing something that is absolutely extraordinary. We're making a big announcement here for our viewers of the Gym Masters Show Live about this global service initiative that she's chairing. And uh, what I love about it, too, is it has a tie-in that I'm actually tied into, and that is my alma mater, <laughs> which is LIU, Long Island University, which is based in New York. And uh, we are so honored and so happy for her because she, this is a lifelong dream of hers, but also it's something that speaks to the heart, to the soul, and it's so appropriate for Rita. If you know Rita Cosby through her professional work, she is a go-getter, she is feisty, but she's also warm and affable and uh, trusting and uh, beloved by not only industry veterans within our world of television and radio and broadcast media and print and, and all of it, the internet included, but also by viewers and listeners and readers and the public at large, because she's always out there doing what she can for people, for the disadvantaged, for, you know, the uh, underdog as well. And I think that is so beautiful. And that's one of the reasons why she and I connected many years ago and we've stayed not only great colleagues within broadcast media, but also dear friends. And we're always checking up on each other and we're always making sure, you know, that she's doing well, I'm doing well, we're always rooting for each other's careers. And that's the kind of person Rita is. If you ever have like a cause or, or something that you believe in, having Rita Cosby <laughs> behind you and uh, rooting for you is a tremendous support system. And she has done that for so many people. So it's quite an honor for us to have her here. And I was very happy we were able to coordinate this because she's extremely busy. Matter of fact, tomorrow she's going to be with Susan Eisenhower. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But uh, we're going to talk about her amazing career, but also we're going to talk about this uh, global service initiative, which really fosters volunteerism and, and so much more. And it's so beautiful, especially now. We need things like this. Uh, we need people to roll up their sleeves and to get involved in our community and our lives and to make our world a better place. How many times in this show have I said to our phenomenal viewers around the world, I'm hoping that out of everything we've been dealing with in this year of 2020, um, we'll rise from the ashes together, love one another, be less divisive, come together, and uh, roll up our sleeves and work our way through the things we've been dealing with, economic, pandemic, different things that we've had to deal with uh, globally as well as individually and collectively here in our country and uh, around the world. So it's something we talk about often here, and this show is all about light, levity, and love, or as we call it, levity, and our viewers uh, that watch are always calling themselves loveties, and this is Lovety Hall. That is what has developed here, and that was a word that I slipped up on. Um, I was saying love and levity one of the nights, <laughs> and what happened? The word levity, and everybody who's been on as a guest, all the viewers have fallen in love with that word, and that's truly what life is all about. So we try to entertain you with entertainers. We try to inform and educate you on this Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, and we do it uh, every single night because it's truly a blessing. And as you know, I'm a professional television and radio personality, host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover, artist, narrator as well. 
just like my dear friend Rita. So we balance the extra things that we do with our careers. And it's because the love of it. It's because of wanting to engage with people, want to lift people up. Uh, we feed off the energy of others and then we give it back tenfold. Rita is exactly like that. So it's wonderful to have you here. And again, you've seen her on so many television networks as well, uh, MSNBC and, and Fox, and of course, Inside Edition and, and so much more. But uh, beyond the actual broadcast career, she was also on WABC in New York. She's a prolific writer, and she's always in the community working on behalf of uh, the greater good of the public. And that's something that, again, service is within her family, too. Her family, very service-oriented. Her father and the dear love that she's had with her father and the celebration of his life is so tried and true. Uh, she's definitely patriotic. She loves our country, but she loves the world. And that's why this is something near and dear to her, this Global Service Initiative. We're going to talk about it. We're going to share what it means to her, and we're going to welcome her as well. First, we do like to welcome our audience here. This is a very special edition of the Gym Masters Show Live. Christine watching in North Carolina. Now, if you have any questions for my very special guest, Emmy-winning journalist, host, author, anchor, and so much more, Rita Cosby, you can post comments, as you guys do like to do, on YouTube at Gym Masters TV, which is where we are right now. We're streaming on YouTube at Gym Masters TV, Facebook, Gym Masters TV, Periscope, Gym Masters TV, and also on Twitch right now concurrently on Gym Masters TV. So uh, feel free to post any questions, any comments on YouTube, as well as on Facebook, as we stream there right now at Gym Masters TV as well. Christine Clifton, who's in North Carolina, USA, says, Good evening, Jim and Lovities. We are thrilled to have Rita Cosby on the show tonight. Looking forward to the entertaining conversation. Absolutely. And it's going to be very um, inspiring. Whenever Rita's involved, it's very inspiring. There's a lot of passion and energy. Good evening, Jim and all the Lovities from Ernestine in North Carolina. Sharon watching in Connecticut. Hi, first day of autumn, everyone. Good to see you, Sharon. Mary Bishop is here. Hi, Jim and everyone. We love having you here. Kathy Short is watching from Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Jim and the Lovety family, as everybody calls it. We love that. Good to see you, Kathy Short, there in wonderful Cleveland. Mike Ferrante is here. Ciao, Jim Masters. Say hi to Rita Cosby. She's here, and she uh, is seeing all these great comments. Love listening to her. Don't we all? Don't we all? And good to see you, Mike, there in New York on Long Island. In Indiana, good evening, Ralph Lampkin Jr. Thank you, Ralph. Good to see you in Indiana. In Iowa, hi, everyone, from Renee jones Oscom. Good to see you, Renee. And Wozniak is here. Hi, Jim and all the lovelies. And happy fall. That's right. This is the first day of fall. My birthday is in two days, so I'm a fall September baby. Libra, typical, always looking to create balance and harmony for the world. <laughs> always have my work cut out for me with that, too. Gloria, hi, Jim and Lovities from Maryland and from Inner Kip, Ontario, Canada. Hi, Jim and Lovities from Merlin. Good to see you as well. Kathleen Walker in New York City saying hi to all of us. Good to see you, Kathleen. Thanks for joining us on the show. Francis is here as well. Hi, everyone. Chris still is watching in Connecticut. Hi, Jim and everyone. Happy first day of Hall. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Looking forward to an amazing show with great conversation. And lovely. Avril Britton is watching in Hampshire once again, United Kingdom there in England. Welcome. It's nice to have you here. Hi, Jim and all the lovelies. Hope you have a great day. Soraya is watching on YouTube. Hi, Jim. Want to uh, say happy early birthday. Thank you. I know your birthday is this Thursday. Uh, so wishing you an early birthday and going to be busy Thursday. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Soraya, on YouTube. Just wanted to let you know the uh, Voices of Classic Soul are my special guests this Thursday. They watch our show regularly. They love the vibe and the positive feel of it. So they asked to come on. They're coming on for my birthday show this Thursday. They are the members of the Temptations, Four Tops, Platters, and Drifters, and they are the Voices of Classic Soul, Legends in Music, coming on this Thursday, September 24th. Marilyn watching in Wichita, Kansas. Good to see you, Marilyn. Hi, Jim and all the loveties. Everybody welcoming him, everybody. Juanita watching in South Africa once again. Thank you very much, Juanita. Beautiful to have you here. You're going to absolutely love this because... Uh, what we're talking about is a global initiative. That's right. That's right. 
Uh, Jeff Smith is here. Hello, Jim Masters. Good to see you, Jeff. Welcome. And to dear friend Rita Cosby. Yes, all caps, of course. Photographer in New York City, personally known Rita for years. We might have even bumped into each other, Jeff, at some of the events that we've been to collectively via Rita as well. So that is really nice. Uh, so many more comments coming in. Keep the comments and any questions you have coming in as well. We love having them and sharing them uh, with our guests all the time and sharing them with all of you. So welcome to the show. I hope you're having a, a beautiful day. We always uh, toast our audience so we toast you and we say thank you for joining us on the Jim Master Show Live to you, 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 and you. And yes, uh, this is the one of the birthday gifts. One of our viewers, Kathleen Walker in New York City, she knows I love my New York Mets. <laughs> so this beautiful new, official New York Mets uh, wine glass. So we toast to all of you as well. And we welcome you to our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. So... Really exciting stuff we have to talk about tonight. This is going to be, this is a blockbuster episode of our series with having Rita here and what we're going to share with you on the show, which is something that uh, you're going to want to learn about and I'm sure participate in it as well. Thank you, Crystal and Mary. Everybody saying cheers and welcome. Merlin in Canada, Crystal as well. Hi to Rita. Welcome to the show. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about our extraordinary guest. And again, if you uh, are not already aware of her extraordinary background, which is amazing. First of all, service is something she's very passionate about and has been for, you know, probably ever since she was born. It, it's why she's spearheading this game-changing initiative in education now. She is so grateful uh, to this amazing country of the United States and the world at large and the importance of giving back. Her own father was a Polish uh, resistance fighter who became a POW in a Nazi camp saved by U.S. troops. So appreciating service runs deep in her family. Uh, what's great about this initiative is the honoring of veterans and doctors and nurses, those involved in public service and more via this mission created by the new Global Service Institute, which she chairs via Long Island University, which actually, as I mentioned, is my alma mater. That's where I went to university, where I went to college and studied uh, the industry that I'm in now. Long Island University, just this month of September, announced that Rita Cosby, our dear friend and the renowned Emmy-winning television host and veteran correspondent, best-selling author, is the chair of its Global Service Institute. Rita is leading the Institute's game-changing and innovative educational initiatives to inspire a timely commitment toward volunteerism. That is so important. We need that now more than ever. And also to elevate the importance and power of service. During this unprecedented moment with the economic devastation caused by the virus, the need for volunteers to assist drastically depleted nonprofit organizations, and that has been really never been greater than it is now. And through high-level engagement programs, conferences, internships, scholarships, and fellowships, this extraordinary institute will instill this character-building theme, preparing and inspiring students and others to help find solutions to complex worldwide challenges and seek personal or professional lives dedicated to service. The Institute upholds a nonpartisan, very important nonpartisan mission to foster crucial dialogue on worldwide issues while positioning students to change the world with new models of innovation and social entrepreneurship. The Global Services Institute's Honorary Advisory Board consists of esteemed and accomplished individuals from diverse fields as well. And what's great about this is with her global experience exploring critical headlines and lifelong dedication to service, Rita Cosby is an exemplary leader who elevates the Institute to even higher levels. What's great also is the incredible people that are involved in this organization. Everybody from boxing legend Evander Holyfield to Super Bowl champ Joe Theismann and, uh, of course, King of the High Wire, Nick Walenda, Grammy-winning singer Dionne Warwick, Emmy-winning actress Susan Lucci, Rock Nation President for Operations and Strategy, Brett Yormark, Oscar-nominated actor, Gary Sinise, best-selling author Nelson DeMille, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, NATO Supreme Allied Commander General Wesley Clark, Michael Reagan, son of President Ronald Reagan, business executive and D-Day veteran Maurice 
are Hank Greenberg, America's first female four-star general, Anne Dunwoody, Medal of Honor recipient Colonel Jack Jacobs, founder of EarthX, Chamel S. Crow, celebrity chef Robert Irvine, public relations powerhouse Ken Sunshine, and many others. Uh, the LIU, Long Island University Global Service Institute, is kicking off the fall 2020 semester with the headliners of Service Monthly Virtual Speakers Series, and that features special live conversations like the one tomorrow, which is Wednesday the 23rd, uh, at the time of this broadcast, with none other than Susan Eisenhower, Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson, and former Israeli Prime Minister uh, Yud Olmert. This is really incredible what's happening here. We're going to talk a lot more about all of this with our award-winning and accomplished guests and dear friend of our show. And I just wanted to show you, uh, before Rita comes on, some really cool pictures during different events that Rita and I have, have had a really wonderful and glorious opportunity to participate in. Uh, many, many different events, many wonderful events that give back to the community. Uh, she's an extraordinary person in so many ways. She really is. You know, I'm a broadcaster. She's a broadcaster in the media field. So we can talk about, you know, our accolades within the industries, the, the awards and so much more. She goes beyond that. She really is a, a national treasure. What she's doing for people nationally and globally is just, there she is with Pope Francis. I mean, it's extraordinary. And uh, this is another great shot. More events that we've been to, uh, more fantastic things that give back to the public at large. So again, we're so honored to have her here on the show. And uh, there she is with King Abdullah of Jordan. <laughs> and again, she's been in the field too, always out there in the field, broadcasting from uh, remote locations whenever she can and with the troops and supporting the troops as well in every which way possible. And she even penned this wonderful book, Secrets from Her Father's Past, Quiet Hero, which is a bestseller. It's a beautifully written book. Uh, you would definitely want to have this. There, of course, is a shot with her dad. Uh, who she uh, absolutely has loved uh, ever since she, you know, came to the uh, to the planet for our wonderful opportunity here to celebrate her, her dad, her life, and everything that she continues to do. I could go on for hours about her, but why don't I bring her on <laughs> so we can chat with her again? You're in for a real treat, everybody watching around the world. The one and only incomparable, dear friend. Emmy-winning journalist Rita Cosby joins me. Rita, welcome to the show, my friend. It looks You look so fantastic, and uh, oh, you are Lord. fantastic. <laughs> Jim, first of all, I am so thrilled to be here in Lovety Hall. I love that. Um, and, and to look back at all those pictures and all the times that you and I have also shared together, so many really special moments. That was really wonderful. You just brought back so many great memories there. And, uh, and I love the fact that you are doing this wonderful, positive show. Um, you are such a fine man. You're such a great broadcaster. And I'm also so proud to call you friend and uh, to be able to share this incredible journey with you and all your amazing viewers all over the world. I love South Africa, by the way. I saw you had one of the, one of the viewers there saying, good morning from South Africa. I love that they're tuned in globally because you are also somebody incredibly special and talented. So thank you and an early happy birthday, by the way, too. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate that. I, it's a busy week with that. I know <laughs> it came quick. <laughs> it, it seems to come every year. I seem to have one. <laughs> yeah, somehow, some of you're drinking. That's why it kind of goes by quick because you're able to drink on the job. So that helps. <laughs> <laughs> we toast to love it. Right. Exactly. Love uh, it. As I've mentioned, this you're just one of the most passionate people. And like I said, when you oh. get behind something, you are all in. You've been that way with your phenomenal career. You're that way with causes that really mean so much to you. Um, before we get into the Global Service Initiative, which we're going to talk about extensively, tell me about the early background for you, Rita. When you were a young girl growing up with your family, were you always sort of inquisitive and curious? Were you always a journalist? I used to run around with my Panasonic cassette recorder and microphone and interview everybody in the family and relatives when they'd come over like I was a little reporter. That was sort of the start for me as a kid. But how about for you, Rita? What was the inspiration for you to get into telling stories and, and sharing stories and covering major news headlines in the way that you've done so brilliantly throughout your career? 
Oh, th you know, Jim, too. I think that you and I were sort of both born to do what we love. And um, I remember as a young child opening up um, and actually I actually submitted a book to a publisher, a well-known publisher years ago. And I wrote sort of my version of Old Man in the Sea and got a letter back from the publisher who said, this is really great. Come back to us in about 20, 25 years. You show a lot of promise. <laughs> so that did give me a little inspiration. But I also remember sitting around the dinner table and as the daughter, I'm first generation American, as you brought up my dad, um, was a Polish resistance fighter. And as you know, I did a book about my father. I, I really call it a love story, not just to my dad, but a love story to America and this great country. Um, and my mother also was an amazing woman as well too. Unfortunately, both of them have passed away, but my mother um, was Danish. And so I would hear, you know, these two different accents. I'd hear about all these amazing countries and I would learn about it sitting around the dinner table. And I remember as a young child hearing about all these far off lands, thousands of miles away and thinking, gosh, I want to go to this place. I want to learn about this. And I think because I learned at a very early age that the world is a very big place and that there are so many different wonderful places to see and wonderful people to meet, I wanted to be a part of that. So yes, I always was very inquisitive. I was interviewing people around the neighborhood. I always enjoyed writing. Um, I was actually, do you know what's so funny? And I, ha I don't know if I've ever talked about this publicly. When I was very young, the one thing that I did not like were people taking pictures of me. And how funny is it that I became a TV broadcast journalist? <laughs> right. But isn't that funny when I was very little, like the lights I used to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. now, you know, you can't get you and I away from the lights, you know? But when I was little, I, ah, you know? But so it's so funny how, you know, I got over that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but I've always loved learning about people. And I've always yeah. lear loved learning about stories. And I've loved doing stories that I felt made a difference. Um, you know, I was thinking, in fact, right before I came on now, and I, you know, I was thinking about just times in, in my life and in my career. And one of the stories I did early on helped free a man from a prison in Mexico. Mm. And that was very early on in my career. But I think of that story often because it inspires me and it reminds me of why I got in this business to be able to make a difference, to literally be able to save somebody's life. Um, and to expose some things that were absolutely wrong for him to have been there in the first place. Um, those kind of things motivate me. And to know that you can make a difference uh, through our great work is really a gift for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, the, the, the path that you've carved out is so extraordinary because the stories that you've been a part of and the influence you've been able to have in such a positive way for people has really stood the test of time. As you were coming along, uh, what were some of those early big breaks that happened for you, whether it's a story or maybe that dream job or things of that nature that really propelled you even further in the industry, Rita? Well, you know, I feel like the advice I always give people is be fearless. And I think that that is 90% of sort of my motto in life is that I don't want to ever say, I wish I would have. I can live with trying and maybe it didn't work out the way I wanted it to be or, or it went a different direction, but I can never live with myself saying, gosh, I wish I had tried that or I wish I had tried to make a difference or do that. And so I've always been pretty fearless. And I think I did get a lot of that from my parents because again, they came over to America with $100 literally in their pocket, um, could barely speak English. My father could barely speak English, but he came over because this country meant you know, opportunities and freedom. And so they were obviously my father in, in war too, was very, very fearless. And I hope I have 1,000th of his like courage, I guess, in my life. And if so, then I'm doing okay. But I, I have always believed um, to take chances and to take opportunities and not also uh, be afraid to ask. And one of my big breaks very, very early on um, was actually even sort of pre-career, if you will, when I was in college. Um, I met uh, Patrick O'Neill, sort of the legendary actor, sort of like of the James Coburn era. And he had offered me a part in a movie. And I was doing some film work when I was in college and I was waking up early and helping with makeup and helping with camera and doing a couple little bit parts. And he was offering me sort of a big opportunity to big, be actually a pretty decent movie star. And I remember saying to him, you know, oh gosh, Mr. O'Neill, this is such a wonderful opportunity, but with all due respect, 
I'm working tirelessly. I'm taking extra classes. I'm trying to get really, really good grades because I'm about to graduate soon. I think I had about a year left at that point in college. And I really want to go into broadcasting. I know what I love. I know I just love writing stories. I love telling people stories. I love sharing them. And he said, you know what? I can't believe you turned down this like unbelievable opportunity. You obviously really care about this career you're going on. Come back tomorrow and give me your resume. Well, of course, like a typical college kid, I didn't have a resume at that point. I said, okay, I'll bring it, right? So I stayed up all night. I think it was at a Kinko's and putting the resume together. And I came back and I said, you know, here's my resume. You know, thank you so much, Mr. O'Neill. I really appreciate it. Anything you can do. And he said, you know, I'm going to help you. I'm going to call my friend. And I said, well, that's great. And then I walked back and I said, by the way, who is your friend? And he said, my friend is Diane Sawyer. And I'm going to make sure she gets in touch with you. And to his credit, Diane Sawyer actually did. And it started this like uh, amazing opportunity. And she said, you know, that Patrick O'Neill said that you are one of the hardest working kids he has ever met. You turned down this unbelievably lucrative offer to be a, basically a movie star and you really want to do journalism. And when I heard what you turned down and I heard that you were so focused and determined and working so hard and, and doing all these classes at the same time, I got to meet you. So I met Diane Sawyer. Um, she actually helped me get my first internship at CBS Evening News, which mm. was probably the most coveted internship yes. in journalism at that time. It was working under Dan Rather, um, you know, who was top of his game at that point there at CBS Evening News. And it was such a privilege to work there with everybody at CBS. CBS. And then from there, it's sort of the rest is history. But it, but it taught me a great lesson. And that's why I think now to this day, you know, here it is, you know, many years later since that moment. But when I see a young person who's always working hard and who is willing to go the extra mile um, and is also taking classes or or doing whatever they can or asking me for advice, I always try to make time and do it because I know how much that meant to me, that somebody took an interest in me and that I also was focused. That was also a real gift for me early on, uh, to know what I wanted to do. But I think when you know what you love, that's 90% of the battle. And it doesn't become a job anymore. It becomes just part of the extension of the essence of who you are. You're living and breathing the essence of who you are through the actual craft, the art, the science of it all, the work itself, mm -hmm. which doesn't even seem like work anymore. It's something right. that you are called to do. It's something that you were placed on the planet to do. It's something you wouldn't never not want to do and we come to realize that as our career goes along the opportunities come along the passions that we have that we are able to to live and fulfill and share with others one of the things that i love about you rita uh and we're very similar in our thinking is you've mm -hmm. always along the way not only we're building those uh wonderful road those those blocks of of journey of success for you, but you also were making sure that other folks were being mentored and noticed and valued and taken care of as you were, your career was soaring and as you were going up the ladder and the ranks in the industry. And I think it's a very beautiful thing. And that's something very, it's always been very important to you, hasn't it, Rita? Yeah, it is. And also, you know, people see us in front of the cameras, Jim, and you and I have been both doing this for a long time. And People don't realize there is such a huge team behind us. Yeah. And I've always had such respect for the product and the appreciation of whether it's the camera person, whether it's the lighting person. You know, I've been I've been in remote places. Um, you showed a picture there when I was in Afghanistan and uh, I would have you know, paid to have a real bathroom. Forget about a camera yes. person or anything else that moment because you're in no man's <laughs> land. Um, and then I've been in a studio where there have been 100 people around, you know, in the, in the studio with me at that time. So I've had, you know, such a, a variety of experiences. But what I've also learned is that everything in life is also teamwork and appreciating everybody's job because I remember again going back to the early days where I was an intern there at CBS Evening News and, and I won't say the name it's so funny I haven't told this story in a long time um, but there was there was an anchor who came on and one of the guys came to me uh, one of the cameramen and he said do you notice a kind of a dark shadow on that person's face and do you notice that the audio wasn't as good and it's slightly off it's not as good as we do it for Dan Rather. It's not as good as we do it for so-and-so. And I said, yeah, I did notice it was just a little bit. I had to look, but it was a little bit. And they said, yeah, that person's not really nice to us. 
And isn't that, wasn't that an interesting comment that early on they said, you are always so nice. You know, you come over every day and you're an intern and you're, you treat us just as well as you treat Dan Rather, Rita. And that, that's the lesson. You're going to do well in life. But it also mm. taught me something else on the flip side is that how important it is. And I always just intrinsically always do appreciate people. But it was a great lesson to on how valuable everybody is in this process and everybody is no matter whatever job you are doing um, even if you were a writer and, and sitting there solitary in front of your desk working on a right product you still have to send it to a publisher or send it to somebody to publish it or a printing press to publish it every successful person has a great team around them and appreciates the people who have contributed whatever level it is because all of it is equally important and all of it makes this incredible product that we love at the end of the day. And, and for me, it makes the journey that much better too because you get to meet some really incredible people. And I, I feel so blessed to be able to have met you know, so many extraordinary people in my career, but also some people that are really amazing unsung heroes mm -hmm. and to be able to shine a light on them and inspire people by their stories too. I've always said, like you do, when you inspire others, you're inspired yourself. And uh, yeah. I, I concur with what you said as far as uh, really appreciating and understanding all aspects of the business, whether it's the promotion team, the sales department, the photographer, the, right. you know, the lighting people, the audio. And you were trained that way. That's the way we were trained is to be versatile and to be sort of utilitarian in terms of understand and be able to sometimes, even if you were in a situation where you had to pick up a camera quick yourself or, right. or help carry this or do this, know something about what everybody's doing as part of that team because you never know we're going to be called upon to fill in or take part when the other person isn't there and to really appreciate what everybody's doing and that is a wonderful way i think that's what makes you have this universal appeal because you really relate to people on all levels which is why i think you're the ultimate choice to be chair of the Global Service Initiative. And uh, speaking of that, I just wanted to show you some of the, the lovity that's already coming in from around the world. Everybody here is Linda in St. Augustine, Florida, welcoming Canada. Hello, Rita, welcome uh -huh. to Lovity Hall. Hi, Linda. Canada. Yeah, our St. Augustine, Florida, welcoming you, Rita, as well. Beautiful. Anna, welcome. Hello, Rita. Love you. The most amazing woman and incredible dear friend from oh, Graziana. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. A, a great Polish woman. Great Polish woman. Very proud. That's right. I've been on plenty of TV shoots where I've learned how to make a good pierogi, and it's all in how you pinch the edges. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you know, you got you to gotta put a little Polish vodka in there, too. It always helps. Always oh, helps. I didn't know that part. <laughs> on the TV shoot, I was being professional. All I was excited about was the potato or the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Welcome, talented Rita. Anne in Southern California is welcoming oh, you, you as well. Again, really fantastic. Hi, Rita. Rita, you're such an amazing, beautiful lady. Looking forward to this opportunity to hear you as oh, well. Thank you. Kathleen in New York City. I think that City. looks like a Polish name too. And Wozniak, that looks like a Polish name. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And Kathleen in New York City welcomes you as well. It's so great when you get these opportunities to and uh, engage with people. I'm very viewer, like you are, very viewer centric. And we like to be interactive here on the show. And I love I, it. Renee and Iowa's welcoming you as well. Uh, Hi, Ka Renee. Kathy Short is. She welcomes you. Uh, Hi, we all love it. Anna Phelps is welcoming all of us here. Yeah. Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas. Hi, Rita. Welcome. Uh, oh, Christine no. in North Carolina. Rita, welcome to Lovity Hall. You are now a Lovity. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm, yeah. in, I'm, I'm in. You're I'm in now. In. I've made You're it. In. <laughs> yes. In the same year, you became the Global Service Initiative Chair as well as... <laughs> Queen Lovity. Queen Lovity. <laughs> the Global Service Institute. Really incredible. Uh, you're in a, such an amazing career and that continues, of course. And uh, again, this really, really... I can't believe all of this. Uh, Christopher Baker says this is a lot of fun. Um, oh. Merlin asks, is Cosby your married name? Ah, very good question. Actually, you know what? Um, I have always been Cosby, by the way. My father was Kozobutski. And as Grace and a number of those amazing Polish citizens that were messaging you earlier, um, my father was Richard Kozobutski. 
and it was K-O-S-S-O-B-O-D-Z-K-I. And I came upon it um, literally, gosh, uh, about 10 years or so ago when I stumbled on an old suitcase and I saw this name and I said, gosh, this looks very close to my name. And my father literally the night before he became an American citizen, my father was Kozabutsky. My mother had a Danish name and uh, they decided, you know, they obviously were Kozabutsky when they got married, but they thought, okay, what can we do? You know, we're about to become literally American citizens within hours at that moment. And they thought Kozabutsky, even the Polish people were having a hard time spelling it because right. it's such a long, even convoluted for a Polish name. And they thought, oh, we've got to trim it. And B-Y is kind of a popular Danish ending. Kozo is, you know, is the beginning pretty close to, even though it's C-O, uh, close to Kozabutsky, which my dad was K-O. But this is interesting at the time. Love and this. this was in 61, I think it was. Um, and at the time, the big name was Bing Crosby. They almost changed it to Crosby. And my father said, well, let's do Crosby. And then my father thought, no, 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 no. Actually, I can't do that. That's too pretentious. And Bill Cosby was not as well known. Not that people I don't think would necessarily confuse us, um, but it's so funny because they were sitting there and saying, okay, well, how can I figure out what's the best way? And they said, well, let's do Cosby instead of Crosby because Bing Crosby, again, was the big name. So he changed it literally when they applied, they were the Kozabutskis and then they were the Cosbys when they became American citizens and sworn in. So I am thankful because I think Rita Kozabutsky and that long spelling of Kozabutsky would be very difficult as a broadcaster. So yeah. I'm very thankful. I didn't have to shorten it naturally. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I get constantly accused of making up the name Jim Masters. People say, your name cannot be Jim Masters. You made it up for TV it's and radio. It's a great name. I said, no, I'm actually, that's my name. I'm actually, it's James Edward Masters, and it's the fifth. It goes back to Europe, to England and Ireland. But uh, that's my name. <laughs> I didn't make it up. They said, no, you're really Harvey Lopperwitz or something. I said, no, it's really Jim Masters. Like, <laughs> And you know what's funny? So I'll tell you a very funny story. Years ago when I first started in television, I had the opportunity to to meet um, Walter Cronkite. And of course, here I was this young, you know, cub journalist. And, uh, you know, there's a couple people that, you know, that, uh, you know, it's every journalist dream at that point to, oh, yeah. to meet Walter Cronkite. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And they said, you know, Mr. Cronkite has a question he wants to ask you before you get started. And I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be this amazing, profound thing of, you know, of wisdom in the news world or, or current event or something. Yeah. And you no, know, he wants to ask you privately something. And I'm thinking, I don't think he's going to hit on me. And I, 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 I don't think it's that. I don't think Walter Cronkite is going to do that. And um, and then I go in the room and he said, I have one question to ask you. And I said, sure. You know, and I'm thinking, gosh, I'm prepping up on news events. Yeah. Is Cosby your real name? Is Rita Cosby your real name? That is a great broadcast name. If you picked it, that's a fabulous name. Keep it. I said, no, no, I was really born with it. Yeah. Even better. You hit the jackpot. You're going to do great. You're smart and you got a great name. <laughs> Stamp of approval from Cronkite. Wow. Oh, I thought it was great. What, what, great. Nothing tops that. Michael Colby's here and Michael Colby says, hi, Rita. Great to see you again. Oh, how wonderful. Hi, yeah. Michael. How Watching great. on YouTube. Merlin and Kenneth says, that is awesome. She loves your story. Crystal says, thank you for sharing your amazing story, Rita. You were such... You have such an incredible career. Marilyn oh, says, you. very interesting. Uh, Merlin loves your background. Juanita in South Africa. Ooh, thanks, love. Marilyn. Thank you. Yes. And South Africa, Juanita. Love your amazing positivity, Rita. So refreshing in a world oh. full of the opposite. Now, uh, is Juanita the one who's in South Africa? She's in South who's... Africa, yeah. Oh, and my Juanita, I am jealous because one of my one of my things you would think, and, and Jim, I'm curious on this. Here we, I, obviously we travel so much for our work. I love to travel. Yeah, so one yeah, of my yeah. favorite trips, um, I actually had the pleasure um, before my mother passed away, um, we went and we spent time in South Africa and it was one of the most extraordinary trips. And we got to go on a photo safari and to the wine country Oof. and to see it's just, it's one of the most, um, Juanita, you're making me just jealous because it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And in SoCal, Southern California, says, loving this interview. And oh, Kathleen you. says she's loving those nice, well-earned Emmys you got back there. Thank you. Thank <laughs> well you. I earned. did work hard for a couple. One of them is actually the story tied to the Mexican prison. 
Really? Oh, yes. that, that's amazing. Thank you. Welcome, Rita, from New Jersey. And uh, yeah, great comments, great stuff. So um, this illustrious career, so many people that you've met, and I want to show some of those photos as well, because I know, uh, and I appreciate you. Wait, 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 Jim, you already showed me the best ones. I met Jim uh, Masters a number <laughs> of times. You already showed me the top. Everything <laughs> else is downhill from here. These are the top, right? <laughs> The top of the top from that Crunk, is, that's, Crunk, it. that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. I think is that was that the Russian consulate? I think I think. Yeah, that, that's what it looks yes. like, right? Yes, yeah. that was that evening. Right. Yeah, that was really, really cool. But you, my friend, you talk about travel. You've been everywhere. Tell us about this really fantastic photo here, Rita. You know, this one um, and as you know, I have such a love affair of the U.S. military mm -hmm. and have such an appreciation of the U.S. military. And I'm a big believer as a journalist um, to get out there and experience it, to really be able to tell the story. And as, as we're looking at this here, um, I remember the day we were literally on that. Uh, we were there in that, uh, you know, mechanized vehicle. We were there for hours upon hours upon hours and no man's land in Afghanistan. And we flew in, first of all, to uh, Bagram. And I think it was that day or the night before they had had a uh, missile attack. They had a rocket attack. Um, and the uh, base had been targeted by a number of insurgents. And literally on the way to the shot, I'll never forget this. This was, you know, I think I'd only been in Afghanistan for maybe about a day or so at this point. And I remember we're driving through town and there were people who were getting in front of the tanks and we would go in, you know, with an armored personnel carrier. It was maybe maybe about 10 of us. Um, I had a bulletproof vest on, um, you know, I had a helmet on um, and obviously heavily fortified. But still, there were so many of them that were being targeted. This was a very volatile time in the world. And I believe this was in 2005. And I remember going through town just outside of Bagram, right outside of the base. And there was a woman walking down the street. And they were honking, honking, saying, you know, she's got to get out of the road. She's got to get out of the road. And I said, what are you going to do? You're, you're going to stop, right? And they said, we don't know what we can do. We, we don't think we can stop. And they had to explain to me. And my, I was just sort of shocked at that. And I remember them saying to me, the day before we stopped and there was an IED in the road. And they actually, you know, they actually were targeting us. So we have to, we have to, so we're driving around. We literally, thank goodness, didn't hit the woman. Um, but it was one of those like moments where it showed you just how dangerous and how precious life is and just how dangerous and intense it is for our troops who are literally there on the front line. And then we went there and we're in the mountainside and we go up to an area where there were Afghan, uh, you know, uh, Afghan fighters who were helping us. And the toughest thing, I think, for our U.S. troops is we had to have them helping us. And they had a great relationship with a number of Afghans who were very loyal to the U.S. But then there were a number of others, as we knew, especially in later years, where they got onto the base and then blew themselves up, you know, that were getting paid off by different sides. So it was very difficult for them to know who to trust, who could work with them, who couldn't. But we went to this particular place where an Afghan fighter was helping and was helping the US troops. We went to the top of this mountain range and that's like almost on the other side of it. And I remember we go to the top and he goes, this is a good guy who's been helping us. He's been protecting this outpost for us. I walk up, it was like hundreds upon hundreds of bullet shells just walking up there and to this guy's little shack and he's sort of on the top of a mountain range and he was protecting so many miles. It was this enormous valley and here he is with a machine gun and just taking incoming clearly. And I said to him, gosh, how long has this been here? Oh, this is about a week. All those empty shells were shells that were shot at him in the last week. And it gave me an incredible sense of, first of all, just how much of a no man's land and how difficult and how treacherous Afghanistan is for our troops and also our allies that are helping there fight alongside us. Um, but, but I remember that day coming back to the base and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, what a day. And to think about that's what our troops go through on the front lines day upon day. And we still have troops, of course, there. Uh, but it's such a such a tenuous region. But it is such a uh, the the climate there, uh, cold, freezing, hot in the summer, you know, contrast between the cold and the winter, cold in the mountain range, windy. 
um, so desolate, so difficult. And you see the pictures, and you know, you saw the picture there, Jim. The pictures do not do, do it justice. And I came back, I, I'm telling you, when I left there, I left there, I remember it was in December 2005, and it was soon before Christmas. The troops were crying when I was saying goodbye, and I was crying saying goodbye to them too, because I thought, gosh, first of all, I pray they all get home safe to their families. And second of all, some of them had not seen an American in so long mm. and were so happy to see a familiar face. And for me to be able to represent that, represent that part of home to them was, was really an honor. Absolutely. Merlin in Canada had asked if, uh, do you know how many journalists were captured? Were there journalists captured during that time at all? Um, I know that there were journalists who were, there were journalists who had been killed. Um, and, you know, that during that whole time, I'm trying to remember if there had been any that had been captured. Obviously, years before, um, we had to go through what happened with Daniel Pearl, as we yeah. all know what happened. Yeah. And it's and I equate sort of even though it wasn't exactly in that area, it's still that whole thing. It was Al Qaeda. It was, you know, it's that whole combination of Al Qaeda, of Taliban, uh, of all of those uh, characters and all the people that we are still, you know, still battling with. As you know, there was just a meeting just recently in Qatar where they're doing the peace deal with the Taliban, still a very tenuous one. But, um, you know, it's extremely risky for, for journalists. When we first started as journalists, I think about, Jim, you know, when I walked into that Mexican prison, when I was a very young journalist, it was an extremely dangerous situation. Um, and um, some, you know, some pretty scary things happened to me and they tried to have happened to me when I was in the prison. Um, but I also think about when I would go out into war zones and other places, a lot of times we sort of felt infallible and, and very, you know, protected, if you will, as a journalist, because most of the times we were untouchable because they wanted us to tell their story. And we were seen as the neutral side um, coming in to share the stories of both sides. You know, um, you know, sometimes it's pretty obvious that there's a good side and a bad side, um, but we would always still try to at least give airing to, to one side to explain where they're coming from, whether we agreed with it or not, or to shine a light that it wasn't something you want to agree with. Um, but I always felt that we had a bit of a cone of protection. And then I think things changed quite a bit in Kosovo. And, and I remember even prior to when that picture was, Jim, I remember when I was going into Kosovo and I remember I had already been in Belgrade and I went in when Jesse Jackson and a number of the religious leaders went in, and that was when they captured the three POWs, the three military guys they captured. Remember who they said were in, you know, were in the wrong section, and they took them as hostages, and they were using them very much as leverage. And I went in with Jesse Jackson and a whole bunch of other religious leaders and some other journalists, and we actually reported that the three POWs were going to be released. We, we actually walked with them to freedom. That was an incredible moment. But then I went back to Kosovo soon after that, and I remember the day I got called from my bosses at Fox News at the time saying, hey, Rita, we would love if you could go back into Kosovo. I was literally watching on the news at the same time, live on the news, that three German journalists, I think it was either three or two, had just been executed. And that was when um, sort of the risks and the stakes upped, if you will, for journalists going in because they knew that they could get headlines by suddenly doing something to journalists. And then, of course, we know what happened with Daniel yeah. Trump. Um, and some of those. Uh, and I was actually on TV, uh, basically almost begging for Daniel Pearl's life because mm. apparently um, I remember that known in Pakistan. And uh, as a journalist, I felt so passionate about that. But it, but it's just a reminder that that uh, we go through very risky times. But when I say that, I also feel like it's nothing compared to what our troops and our allies go through on the front lines every day. Merlin in Canada said, I can only imagine how frightened you must have been being there and witnessing all of that. That must be when you're on the front lines in any of these situations, there is that, you know, uh, dealing with the, your own emotions, but then having to tell the story and to uh, sort of maybe tamper or hold your own emotions because you got to get in there and got to keep steady and you got to tell the story and you got to get through the whole situation with the crew and the team around you. Uh, how do you balance all of that in the work that you've done, especially being in such, you know, extreme conditions and situations like that, Rita? You know, it's a great question. And I think, I think we get laser focused on doing our job. I think the most important thing is to still be human. And, and you've known me, Jim, a long time. Sort of what you see is what you get. There's some people who are very different sort of on air than they are off air. 
Um, I'm too much myself that I can't change. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm who I am. But I feel like it's so important to still be compassionate and and not come across, you know, as cold and detached. But yet at the same time, I think also still be laser focused on our mission. And I think because our mission, I truly believe, is to be able to make a difference and to be able to help people. And sometimes when you're in this intense moment where something has happened, I, I covered a plane crash very early on. I remember when I was a reporter in Charlotte, North Carolina, I was a reporter and anchor there. And I was one of the first people on the scene. So you can imagine what I saw. Um, and I remember it was just so emotional um, and so painful to see what I was visibly seeing as a, as a human being, forget a journalist or a reporter. And my first thought was, okay, how can we help them? What can we do? What can me and my camera person do? Um, and then once we started reporting, once help was there and other elements were coming in and we started focus on what we needed, um, then I think we also offered our chopper up to some of the rescue crews to be able to help and to be able to get footage. I think it was for the FAA. I remember us working, trying to do whatever we could, whatever resources we had as a station to be able to help in the efforts and the recovery efforts. And a number of people did survive, thank goodness that. But I was intense, intense, intense. And I think I was on the air for 20 hours straight. I believe it was pouring rain. Um, I remember that I was wearing, I think it was like a white or cream dress because by the time I came home, my dress was soaked. It was it was black from mud and dirt and everything all over my face, all over my hair, my whole outfit, the whole thing. I was so in the zone. And then I came home and I just remember coming home and crying, uh, thinking back of, of what was going on. But I remember at the moment when it happened, I thought, I have to do what I can to try to help these people and to try to get the word out and to try to offer whatever we could to rescue crews and to do whatever you can do. So I sort of got into the sort of roll up my sleeves and try to help and try to contribute as much as we can, whether it's from a journalistic perspective or a human perspective. Um, but I think you also don't want to lose sight of, of the emotions too. And I feel like, you know, it's interesting. I, I tell, sometimes people ask me, is it easier as a man or as a woman being a journalist? You know, and, and sometimes, I mean, I think a, a good journalist, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. Um, I think that that's the, the soul of the person is what matters. But sometimes it does help to have a woman because, you know, maybe there's, there's a question that I might ask or there's a question that I'm thinking. Um, and I tell everybody, sometimes if I'm interviewing a tough character, they don't see you coming. Because they'll say, right. oh, yeah, come on in. Yeah, yeah, come right. on in. <laughs> the yeah. next thing you know, you're like, why did you do this? Why did you do that? And they go, oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's uh, Where's the exit? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, door's exactly. locked. Right, that's right. it. You're, you're not getting out. <laughs> I have another fantastic. This, this must have been an extraordinary moment for you with, of course, the Pope. Tell us about this one here, Rita. Oh, you know what? That was an amazing moment. And I tell everybody, you know, um, I've been blessed. I've met three popes, but had the pleasure to interview Pope Francis. And what was kind of interesting, I was put in a position and uh, what a surprise. Nobody tells the pope what to do. Right. Nobody tells, nobody, you know, they, it's all whatever the pope feels that day, if he feels like talking to you. And I was put in kind of a neat position to be able to ask him questions if he felt like it. That's basically the, the best they can get. And so I was put in this wonderful um, position. And right before, by the way, the Pope was about to walk over, and this was in June 2004, I believe it was. And a lot of people had not heard, you know, he was still very early in his papacy, Pope Francis at that moment. And as we know, um, Pope Benedict spoke English, Pope John Paul spoke English, and he spoke a, a number of languages fluently, Pope John Paul. But Pope Francis, people didn't really know how well his English was. Um, of course, you know, he's from South America, um, but they sort of assumed he could be almost as versant as the previous popes. And so I was all ready to start doing some questions in English. And it was right before the Mideast Peace Summit that he held at the Vatican. So here was this incredible historic moment too of all times to talk to him. It was just this unbelievable moment. And you had the Israeli leader, you had the Palestinian leader, you had the Greek Orthodox leader was there. And it was this moment of sort of bringing all these faiths together. So it was this truly historic moment too. And I thought, okay, if he comes over, I had my thoughts in my mind, I was gonna ask him in English about the Mideast Peace Summit. And then one of his guards came over to me and I, you know, you, I, we were waiting for a while before this moment happened and said, you know, here's a tip for you. If you know Spanish, talk to him in Spanish. 
he will respond much better. He'll be able to understand you much better and he'll appreciate it much better and you'll get more out of him. And I remember thinking, and I speak Spanish, I speak fluent Spanish. I went to school at University of Sevilla just for, um, I went there for a year uh, and I've kept up my Spanish, but obviously, you know, English is my first language. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I literally had, I think it was maybe 15, 20 seconds or so while the Pope is walking over, I've just been told this new information and I've got to suddenly talk about it, about the Mideast Peace Summit. It's not like you're ordering breakfast or lunch. It's a pretty lofty topic and do it in Spanish. And fortunately, the words came out somehow. And I think he was so happy and appreciative that I was speaking to him in his native tongue. And he smiled at me and he stopped. And we had this amazing exchange. And I asked him, you know, do you think you can do something that maybe politicians have not been able to do? Um, we know we've seen some breakthroughs, obviously, of late um, between the Trump administration and UAE and Bahrain and others. Um, but of course, still very tenuous between Israel and the Palestinians. And that's been, obviously, that's, that's an enormous, enormous issue. I've spent a lot of time um, over in the Middle East and appreciate the Middle East very much and, and understand a lot of the complexities there. And that's a lofty goal. But I remember looking at Pope Francis's eyes and said, is there something that you think that you can do differently? And, and you could tell that he really genuinely wanted to create a breakthrough moment and talked about the power of prayer and the use of prayer and, and the power of faith and that faith can overcome everything and God can overcome everything. And it was really this just unbelievable moment and beautiful moment. And then he walked away. And, and I remember Jim thinking, what does a good journalist do? He's still right there. He was shaking hands with some other people and saying hi to other people. And I thought, you know what? Let me see if he'll come back again. So I said something else in Spanish and he came back. And then we got to talk a little bit more. So it was just this one wonderful moment. And after it was over, you know, I rarely kind of get goosebumps. But after it was over, I thought, oh, my goodness, how blessed am I that I just got to talk to the Holy Father. And I did it in Spanish, you know. That's and, amazing. And I, and, and I was literally talking with him. And I, was, and I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, how, how lucky am I? I didn't want to wash my hands for a long time. It was just such a gift. That's something that you'll treasure for the rest of your life, that, that opportunity, that rare opportunity, and to seize the opportunity and to bring it to fruition in such a beautiful way that I'm sure he has remembered as well, which I think is what, why we do what we do is to make these lasting impressions on people's lives that are positive, even if it is the Pope. I think you sort of inspired each other in that photo, in that moment, which is a beautiful thing. Here's another great shot. I mean, you've had a wonderful opportunity to meet so many incredible people as part of the career. King Abdullah of Jordan, tell us about this. Yeah, King Abdullah of Jordan. Um, I have met him a number of times, and you know, he's really a remarkable guy. As we talk about peace in the Middle East, because he has really, you know, uh, played an important role and really a strong role for peace in the Middle East. And he really understands, I think, also the importance of his position in the Middle East. Of course, his dad was the leader as well. And he has really such a strong affinity for America and for freedom. And they went through, you know, some very difficult times when they stood by America and when they were fighting against ISIS. Remember early on, they were very much targeted and still, you know, are very vulnerable and very much sort of on the front lines there where they are geographically. But, uh, but he's really a heroic man and just a really strong supporter of peace and a, and a beautiful man. And we're very lucky to have him as an ally, ally and Israel as an ally in that part of the world where it is just so, you know, tenuous. And to have someone like that in the front lines, he's, he's a beautiful man, uh, speaks great English and is so warm and so welcoming. And every time I see him, um, he just, how are you? How are you doing? You know, it's just, it's, he's just a really, really incredible human being too. Another great shot here of you uh, on the scene. Where were you here with this shot? Yeah, this is also in Afghanistan. And look again, look how far. This is like one of our troops, uh, you know, one of our groups is there. And here's this unit. And look what's behind them. Do you, I, you know, you don't see anything for miles upon Nothing. miles upon miles. Yeah. And it just shows. And there I am. I'm wearing a, a bulletproof vest and I've mm -hmm. got a helmet on. Um, I know for some of the times I even had bulletproof sleeves on even as two because you know, every moment is there as you're just watching your back yeah. and the troops there in particular. One of the things that I love also doing, Jim, is, you know, I'm involved in, in a group that's called Troopathon and it's a big telethon that we do every year where we send care packages to troops that are on the front lines. 
And I often think of folks that are like those that you just saw in the picture. And you think about men and women, you know, we still have today, even though things, you know, are, you know, much more somewhat toned down. Obviously, places are very volatile. You know, what could be happening in Iran or North Korea, there's still so many hotspots around the globe. And we still have so many troops that are still in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we still have special forces in Syria. And of course, we have them in a number of other locations in South Korea and elsewhere around the world. But I always love knowing when I do uh, that telethon for the troops, and we actually just did it just recently, how much it means that they get these packages and they often kind of hold them up. And I think uh, soon after that, it was maybe the next day, we went to a forward operating base that was literally in no man's land. That looked like no man's land. I think I literally was in no man's land. And when they, I came up, they were holding up and they were showing other care packages and things that they had gotten. And were just, they pinned them up like on top of, you know, like a little makeshift tent that looked like a mansion for them. And they were just so grateful and so appreciative that Americans had not forgotten them and that Americans cared about them. But uh, it just reminds us of how important it is to always keep supporting them, do whatever we can to shine a light on them in any way we can. Absolutely. Beautifully said and lived as well. And, and of course, of all the different people in your life that have uh, stood out, there is this other fine gentleman who I know um, is really there at the top of the list. Uh, <laughs> my dad, um, you know, for me, Jim, and, and you know this, and, uh, and obviously uh, some of your um, wonderful, wonderful viewers do too. I feel, and part of the reason I love what we're doing with the Global Service Institute, it's teaching the next generation about giving back in service. And I learned that at a very early age, and that's my father there, now my late father who passed away just a few years ago. Um, but soon before my father passed away. And I tell everybody um, to seize the moment. And I talked earlier about being fearless, but also to use the time. And I think a lot of times now, especially with what's been happening with the coronavirus, people are stepping back and realizing what matters, appreciating family, appreciating the people and their loved ones in their lives so much, you know, because they've been home with them or maybe even sadly lost a loved one or a family member, a friend or something in the crisis. Um, and I think that it is so important when you have the moment to tell people how much you care or to learn about their lives. And in my case, I literally stumbled on a suitcase and it had a rusty POW tag and a bloody red and white fighting Polish armband. And then I found a card with that name that I mentioned earlier, Richard Kozabutski on it. And everything was in Polish. And I was looking and saying, gosh, this looks like Cosby. And I know my dad's Polish. And I decided to go on what I tell everybody, the most incredible journey of my life, Jim. And I reconnected with my father. We had a lot of emotional and physical distance. And needless to say, my father went through a very difficult time. Um, and he shared the story of his life with me finally. And I'm so thankful that he did while he was alive. And while, he, you know, obviously his memory was great too at that moment too, and was able to really capture. And my father was a Polish resistance fighter literally a teenager when the Germans invaded Poland and saw the invasion happen and decided to stay and fight and was part of this incredible group called the Polish resistance. And, and as people know, you know, Poland was, you know, literally just a sitting duck when the Germans came in and so many proud Polish citizens decided to rise up men and women. And ultimately my dad was also part of the Warsaw uprising and he fought for what's called 63 days of glory, but they were sadly slaughtered and they lost over 200,000 people in 63 days. Mm -hmm. Think about those odds. Yeah. And my father was hit by a mortar shell. He was very seriously injured. He was taken into captivity. He was thrown at the butt of a gun in a box car and then hauled off to a POW camp uh, dying at that time and then got to a POW camp and after being in the camp for some time, my dad at 90 pounds and six feet tall escaped. Mm. And my dad and a whole bunch of the guys escaped. A number of them were recaptured. My dad was one of the lucky ones and was in the woods for six, uh, for about uh, two and a half days with 60 others, 60 other Polish guys, because they stayed in sort of the groups with their nationalities. And so about 60 of these Polish guys were in the woods. A plane came by 
and they dove for the ditches thinking, okay, gosh, we have just been spotted. We're in Germany. Remember, there are escaped POWs who know they're going to be slaughtered on site. There's no gray. They were basically going to be slaughtered in the camp, and they were definitely going to be slaughtered outside of the camp. And so the plane came by, threw something out. They thought, okay, this is it. They thought it's a grenade, and they dove for the ditches. And the plane came by again, and they looked up, and they realized, oh, my goodness. And they saw a star on the plane, and they realized it was an American plane, mm. not a German plane. And what was thrown out was a chocolate bar with a note wrapped around it, tied with a red ribbon, sent from the American pilot, who I always think about how amazing that must have been for him to see these literally walking skeletons, like my dad, who was, again, six feet tall and 90 pounds, and again, one of the more healthy ones. And the note said from the American pilot, welcome. It's safe to walk now during daytime. There are no troops between you and our American lines. Go west. You have 15 miles to walk and you are free. And then my dad ran to American troops and came to a riverbed and saw these young American GIs. And my dad, again, was Polish. And all he could say was, thank you, thank you. And he kept hearing them say, you're free, you're free, you're free. But that's why my dad came to this incredible country called America. And till my dad's last breath, he was so grateful to be an American citizen, so proud of his Polish heritage, as I am too. And my dad was also so appreciative of those who serve and those who give back. And literally every day that my dad would see a member of the US military, he had tears in his eyes mm. because he knew what that meant. And not just to him, but literally to the world. So, so I, I feel such a deep sense of of pride of my father and so proud that he shared the story with me because it was obviously a very painful story too, but a story that makes me so proud. And, and I love sharing the story, Jim, because it reminds everybody, not, it's not only the book I did, Quiet Hero, Secrets from My Father's Past, um, which I hope everybody gets um, because it's a love story from a daughter to a father. And it's a story also about forgiveness because my father had a, a lot of bumps along the way, but it's also a story of who we are as Americans and what not just we, but, but freedom loving people around the world, what we represent and what we mean to countries that are in difficult places like Poland was in World War II. And, and the, the message of freedom and the message of giving back to others is something that I think about every day and, and makes me so proud. And, and to see where Poland is today is an amazing testament to the Polish people. And I've been back a number of times. And uh, every time I go back, the first time I went, I went with my dad. And it was his last visit to Poland and my first. So every time I go, I feel my father's soul there. And, uh, and, and I just have such a beautiful love affair of Poland, too. Yes, you do. A couple of people asking, do you speak Polish as well? You know, I can understand a little bit. It's a very hard language to understand. It's very different. I can understand a little bit more than I can speak it. But, uh, but uh, you know, I can, I can understand. And I can actually understand a decent amount now that I've been there when I've gone. But, uh, but I, I've sworn one of my bucket lists is to actually be able to, to get to a point where I can speak it fluently. In my mm -hmm. household, because my mother's Danish, they would speak English in the household. That right. was the common language. Um, that they learned because I don't know if my mother, I don't think my mother ever spoke Polish and I don't think my dad ever spoke Danish. Um, but we used to, I used to hear English all the time when I was growing up, but, uh, but that's definitely one of the things I really want to learn. I do appreciate Polish food and I definitely appreciate the Polish heart and that, that spirit that like fight for freedom is, is an unbelievable, you know, to me, I tell everybody, I'm so, so proud of my Polish heritage. Absolutely. Uh, Al Harris is watching, I believe, in California. Please send Rita my love. She's a very close friend of Raquel and I, Al Harris. Oh, hi, hi, Alex. Thank mm. you. Alex Alex is a great guy, too, who does a lot with service and has, know. has a group, too, that gives back. Bravo, my friend. Sue says, your life story, wow, is amazing. Uh, Christine, the photo with the Pope captures so very much a memorable moment in your career in journalism as oh, well. And um, Sherry says, what amazing moments in time. And you have these great pictures to go along with each of them. Um, Thank you. Jeff Smith says, Rita, keep up the great work. Hope to see you soon. Jim, looking forward to meeting you and snapping some shots of both of you together. Take care. Be safe. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that, Jeff. Thank you. Je Jeff is a great photographer. Thank you. And Kathleen says, amazing story. Lots of love from Merlin in Canada. Sherry says your father's story gave her goosebumps. 
Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I could see a lot of people can relate to that kind of, you know, and, and the way you tell it, the passion and the love and the, the enthusiasm and just you're so blessed to have had that opportunity to come together. Not a lot of people have that. They go through life and then somebody passes yes. and it's the regret of never having had that opportunity. And you guys fostered it, seized it and made the most of it and how you, enriched you know, I, both your lives right. were. You know, Jim, you're right. You know, and I, and I think about that too. Like, had I found those items, Jim, and so many times, you know, you see something and you say, okay, is this a sign? And my parents had gotten divorced when I was a teenager. And my mother always felt my father was a hero and didn't yeah. even know. You know, it's amazing. I know so much more about my dad than my mother ever did. Because when you go through trauma, as people who go through war or go through any sort of trauma in your life, a lot of people have gone through different forms of trauma. People who've gone through it, and I'm sure you're, you're many viewers all over the world, you kind of tend to block it off and right. you tend to kind of put the shield over it. And my father very much did that. And it was, it was one of these things, and I talked about this even in my book, I had to remember the first time that I knew my father was different, Jim. And I yeah. remember my father came back from a run and I saw these scars all over his body. And it looked like, you know, cracks of dried mud. And I knew intrinsically, even as a child, that it was something that was sort of off limits. And when my father walked away, we were camping at the time, I said to my mother, what happened to dad? Like that doesn't look like a normal body, a normal chest with all these, you know, crack marks and, and you know, scars all over it and bullet holes. And um, my mother said, your father went through tough times growing up. We don't talk about it. Mm. And the door was closed. Yeah. And I'm so glad that when the door was open for me and I found those items in the suitcase, Jim, that, you know, I remember at that moment, I thought, okay, I have two choices. I could put them away, um, you know, and, you know, my father obviously had a lot of issues psychologically because of what he went through. Sure. Um, or I could also just, you know, maybe at some point get to him or I could do what I did and say, yeah. you know what, I need to connect with my father. I need to find out who I am. I need to find out who he is. And this is this amazing man and yeah. this incredible person and i'm so glad i did that and that's that's the one thing that i hope also people out there when there is a moment um of whether it's a uh, to reconnect with someone to forgive somebody um whatever it is it's important to take advantage of that moment and not let it pass because as you said jim you know what if my father had passed away and i said gosh i wish i would have i wish i had had a, a chance to talk with him i think about how blessed i am that I was able to hear this story from my father firsthand about his incredible journey and help shine a light on this incredibly heroic story of the people of Poland, which I, again, I'm so, so proud of. And when my father started telling me this story, I thought, first of all, of course, I was a daughter wanting to get to know my dad. And then I thought, gosh, this is such an important story of heroism, of who we are as Americans. The people of Poland had not really been shown too much in the United States in terms of their history, I felt, had been under undershown and undervalued in the United States. I think a lot of scholars and people knew, but the average American didn't know that much about the Warsaw Uprising. And it's one of these unbelievably heroic moments. And I thought, I need to take advantage of this moment. My dad is ready to talk as a daughter to learn it and to be able to share this incredibly you know, powerful story of who we are as Americans, but also who these incredibly um, heroic people of Poland are and to educate the world about you know, the, these two wonderful, wonderful countries that do so much to represent freedom. And, uh, and I'm so proud. I tell everybody one of the greatest calls of my life, Jim. You know, I think about full circle from going from the moment of having that disconnect with my dad when I found those items to being able to call my dad and say, hey, guess what's on the bestseller list? You know, uh, a it's a book about your life. Unbelievable. You know, yeah. and, and my dad, you know, it was amazing, Jim, when my dad learned it. And this is what was so amazing about my father. Um, I said, Dad, congrats to you, congrats to Paul, you know, congrats to everybody, congrats to your, your, your comrades. And he said, Rita, you know, not congrats to me, congrats to my comrades who did not make it back, congrats to the American troops who saved me, and congrats to Poland, they deserve this. So my father got it that it was so much bigger than himself, you know, and that was Absolutely. Which is a beautiful, beautiful thing to have experienced. And, and people are very moved and touched by this story. Now, as I knew they would be, that's why I wanted to ask about it. Uh, Ryan says, read his book. is absolutely amazing. You'll be captivated from the first page. Uh, Thank you, all, 
And Nancy says, Rita, hello, so proud to be your friend. Uh, Kathy says, uh, you've had some amazing times. Thanks for sharing with us as well. Um, and everybody mentioning, of course, Tom. Please mention Tom. Tom is a great gentleman, a wonderful man of God, and a perfect fit with Rita. He is. He is. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very lucky to have a, a beautiful, faith-filled person in my life. Sherry says, obviously, the door really was open, and you knew deep down it was time. So happy for you that fate stepped in, and he was able to tell you it truly was meant to happen when it did with the relationship with you and your father. Yeah, and I do believe that there's there is that moment. And as I said, I'm a very faithful person and firmly believe that that there was this moment that God put these items before me. And also, yes. I also believe that I was at a point here. I am a journalist who's covered so many wars, as you were showing and have spent time with prisoners of war and have seen, you know, battle scars up close, um, but yet to feel it in my own family and to go through it. Um, I think also at the time when I found it, I was an adult and I'm very thankful. You know, of course, I would have loved to have had a better and closer relationship with my father um, in my earlier years. When I was young, I was close to him. But then there were many, many years where there was a very much a disconnect emotionally and physically. Um, but now that I've also come to understand what he went through, it makes so much sense. And it, it amazes me that he was even able to function. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's such an unbelievably heroic story of what he went through. And I also believe I found those items at the perfect time where I was really ready to go and talk to him and ready to learn about him and also be, being able to share the story uh, with the world in a big, big way too. And that's why I felt a real responsibility, Jim, when I did find those items and in a beautiful way, I thought, oh my gosh, this is such an amazing story of who we are, the best of America, the best of Poland. Mm -hmm. and, and I was in a position as a journalist to be able to yeah. share it in a big way. And I thought, you know what, I need to do this. You know, I need to do this for me and my father, but I also need to do this for America and for Poland too. And for me, um, timing is everything. And, and it was the absolute right time to be able to share it with the world. Absolutely. And I want to make mention um, your extraordinary career. You were born in Brooklyn. Of course, as I mentioned in the introduction, a renowned Emmy winning TV host, veteran correspondent, multiple best selling author. You've anchored highly rated primetime shows on Fox News Channel, MSNBC, secured exclusive interviews with more than 20 world leaders, including six U.S. presidents. In recent years, you served as a frequent guest host for HLN, CNN as a special correspondent for the CBS syndicated news magazine, uh, Inside Edition, of course. And you're heralded as one of the most influential women in radio. And from 2014 to 2018, uh, Radio Inc. magazine said you were selected as Legend of the Year for 2018, <laughs> chosen among all women on and off the air in radio history in the industry. They, they were drinking Polish vodka that day. They were drinking <laughs> Polish vodka that day. You've also been honored with six prestigious Gracie Awards, including Outstanding Host, Outstanding Talk Show, as well as the Best Talk Interview for the exclusive interview with Hillary Clinton. Uh, you were one of the youngest senior correspondents in the country for the National Television News Network when you extensively covered the White House, Capitol Hill, Pentagon, breaking many major stories in Washington, including uh, informing President Bill Clinton he had been subpoenaed to testify. Uh, having been one of the most uh, incredible hosts on WABC Radio in New York, serving as political editor from 2015 to 2018, anchoring coverage of significant local and uh, national stories, and of course the most contentious congressional debates of 2018, award-winning one-hour special on the New York primary day in 2016, and uh, interviews with all five presidential candidates, Republicans and Democrats, and so much more. You're extraordinary and the work continues. And now you've been made, according to the Long Island University, with love from so many people who said, yes, 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 she's the one, the oh. chair of the Global Service Institute. Tell us about this. Uh, when you heard that, because you've been working towards this, I think, all your life. This is legacy building that we're talking about here. The work that you and the folks involved with this institute, you're doing work that's going to touch the lives of generations. Immediately now, which is what we need, 
but it's going to last for generations. Um, tell us about this incredible uh, institute, the uh, breadth of it, the germ and the inspiration for it, and how you came to be involved in such a glorious way. And congratulations to you, my friend. Oh, thank you. And you know what it is, the legacy and something that I just think is going to outlast the both of us for generations to come. But first, I want to talk about the most proud graduate of LIU, and that's you. Because how funny is this? And, and for your viewers, you know, Jim and I had been talking about me joining the show here. And of course, I said, yes, you know, I adore Jim, as, as we all do, as all of you do out there. But it's so funny because I said, oh, I have this project that I definitely would love to, you know, talk with you about and announce it with you. And Jim had no idea. You had no idea about LIU, which is what's the funniest thing. And Jim is actually a graduate of Long Island University in the film and broadcast, right? Yeah. And you were also at the radio station and at the newspaper there and also on the debate team as well. You were head of the debate team. I love that you were, I mean, that's why it's so funny how the world works, how life works of all the places that this was actually your alma mater, uh, which is so great and so fantastic. And, and obviously you got great training there because look how far you have come, it's wonderful. And, um, and LIU, as, as you know firsthand, Jim, is it's an amazing university system. And I say system because they have a big campus there in Brookville, the CW Post, the LIU Post campus, uh, which is in gorgeous. It's in Nassau County there in Long Island. It's absolutely stunning and has a very storied history of service yeah. in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But then also has a Brooklyn campus. And then they have a number of other satellite campuses. But this is a university that has 265 accredited programs, um, very highly you know, ranked, highly regarded. And when I started talking there to the head of Long Island University, uh, President Kim Klein, and when Kim Klein started talking with me, we were just at the time when we were talking, we were talking sort of about doing an event or something together. I've done a number of things at different universities all over the world and have spoken at different universities and very much care about students, you know, and education. And then we started talking and I heard about the incredible vision. First of all, she has been at the university for just a few years now. And already I, she has done unbelievable things and taken that university to incredible strides and had an amazing vision of where she wanted the university to go. And I was so impressed with her vision and other leaders there at LIU. And I thought, gosh, this is really incredible. This is different than these other places out there, these other great other, you know, other great universities out there, but there's something really special. And they'd already we're looking very boldly, looking at things that could be transformative in education. And so collaboratively together, um, we were sort of discussing, saying, okay, how can we do something that's different and unique in education? And we saw a void. And we saw that in general, um, all over really in education, that there really wasn't a place to teach the character building skills of service. And we're talking about volunteerism giving back those values that you get and also practical things as you talked about instantly too as well, uh, being able to connect volunteers and charities, but also through courses, through classes, through speaker series, through this whole level of array, really teaching those values that create the sort of model global citizen, if you will. And I thought about as a journalist, you know, people come to me all the time and say, hey, I want to send my son or daughter to a great journalism school. Where should I send them? And I would know right away where to send them. But then they would say, OK, well, what if I want to send them to a business school? I would know probably where I'd be able to recommend some of the top schools in the country. But if somebody said, I want to teach my son or daughter to learn these incredible character building skills of giving back, of thinking outside of oneself, of having a life of purpose, whether it's professionally or personally, I wouldn't know where to send them. And I'm now very proud to be able to say it's to the Global Service Institute at LIU. And so we have all these courses. We're going to be doing these speaker series that you mentioned uh, as of that this date right now at the airing of this. Tomorrow, in fact, everybody who's watching tomorrow at noon, we are going to be having Susan Eisenhower, the granddaughter of our 34th U.S. President, Dwight D. Eisenhower. She's going to be our first speaker for our Headliners of Service 
series. It is a free lecture. It's a virtual lecture. And you can go online to globalserviceinstitute.org. And if you go to globalserviceinstitute.org, you'll go down, you'll go to the speaker series. She's our first speaker up there. And it is free. It is a virtual lecture. You do have to register. But you can also submit questions, too, and be able to ask a question of Susan Eisenhower, this you know incredible woman who's an international policymaker, uh, someone who has certainly you know, grown up, spent time in the White House when her grandfather was there, um, and can talk about everything from Russia to the book, this incredible new book that she has called How Ike Led, and it's the principles that her grandfather led by. And think about the decisions he had to make, leading D-Day, um, the Korean War, uh, dealing with the Cold War. There's so many amazing areas. I can't wait to talk to her. And then on October 1st, we have Dr. Ben Carson, who's another speaker too. And that is also another free virtual event. So the next one after that is the former Prime Minister of Israel, Ehud Olmert. So we've got a, a superstar lineup from people of all walks of life. But the people watching right now, tomorrow, Susan Eisenhower, it is a free virtual lecture. You got to go to globalserviceinstitute.org and register. And again, it doesn't cost anything, but just to get into the Zoom discussion, it will be at noon Eastern time. And I'll be interviewing her and also opening it up for questions from all of you. So that's going to be neat. So we've got that. We also have a, a competition, Jim, too, for high school students to compete. And it's 100 small ideas to change the world. And the mission of that is to be able to inspire, especially high school students, seniors, and also juniors, to submit ideas that they think could be game changing, that could make a big difference. Maybe our small ideas, tangible ideas, but that could have big outcomes. And as we've seen right now, of course, with the coronavirus and so many things happening in the world, you know, there are different ideas that come up that percolate. And often it's somebody, you know, who just thought of it first or who was able to pass that on first. And we want to be able to inspire the next generation to start thinking out of the box how they too can make a difference and impact the world. So we have that. We also will have, in addition to some of these really well-known speakers, we're also going to be exposing students, young and old, because we also want to open it up to everybody. It's not just for students, but for young and old. We're going to be exposing to unsung heroes as well. And in fact, some of the people you mentioned on our honorary service board, we have, you know, the great boxer Evander Holyfield, who's also just an incredible human being and does so much for children. And we also have Joe Theismann, uh, the great Super Bowl champ, who's also a huge supporter of giving back as well. And Dion Warwick, we've got Buzz Aldrin. But we also have a D-Day veteran and we also have a Medal of Honor recipient. And in fact, we have two D-Day veterans. We have one who stormed Utah Beach as a teenager, and we have another one who stormed Omaha Beach as a teenager. And these are people who think about the values and what they can pass on for young people and, and, and older people, everybody, to be able to listen to those stories while they're still here, while they're still among us, to share those stories like I was so blessed to hear it from my father. I want really to expose people to the hero heroism and the heroes that are living among us, these unsung heroes, because they can create often some of the biggest impacts. Obviously, some of the big names can have an impact too, certainly, and incredible people like Susan Eisenhower, but also people who are everyday heroes. And we've seen so many of them with the coronavirus. We think of the doctors and the nurses and the first responders who are really rock stars and deserve to be inspired. Um, and I also think getting young people and getting people to say, boy, I want to see how I can give back personally or professionally. And that's the key, is that we're going to be showing them different levels, Jim. And what's kind of neat, too, in addition to all these programs, the other thing we also did was we created an app. And everybody who's watching now, please make sure that you download it. Um, it is the Global Service app. And you can get it on the Apple Store or Google Play. Global, go to Global Service Dash Volunteering. You'll see it there with the big globe and just download it. It is absolutely free. And we will be immediately connecting volunteers with nonprofit organizations that are in dire need because of the coronavirus. They always want volunteers and always want help. But think about right now with the economy that we've been dealing with, with the pandemic, with so many people still in quarantine. You know, the economy is, is so uncertain and so many people are just dealing with very dire circumstances. And charities are dealing with sort of a one-two punch, you know, because on one hand, Jim, there's such an overwhelming need 
for their services, whether it's a food bank or whether it's helping elderly or whether it's somebody working in a nursing home or with veterans. You think about just overwhelming demand. And then on the other hand, you know, a dire circumstance in terms of the fact that people are not maybe giving as much in donations. So they really do need these volunteers and people to step up. And I consider what we're doing here at the Global Service Institute at LIU, we want to be part of the recovery of this incredible country that did so much for my father and has done so much for all of us. And we want to create the model global citizen. And so first instantaneously through this free app, again, the Global Service-Volunteering app, everybody go right away right now to uh, the Apple Store or Google Play. It's free. You download it. You can submit your name if you want to volunteer. It's going to show you places that are looking for help. It's going to show you ways you can help. So it kind of fits your interests, fits your time frame. It's very, very neat. We've been working on it for months. And then you can also go to the globalserviceinstitute.org and sign up for Susan Eisenhower, who at this airing, it's going to be tomorrow on Wednesday. And then we've got Ben Carson, and we have a whole bunch of great speakers. Um, but there's so many different ways that we can teach you how you can give back. And not only is it going to be rewarding for you personally, it's also something that's a really smart thing to do from a practical standpoint, because when this economy, and it's already starting to open up as we're seeing in many places of the world and getting better in many places of the world, but still slowly. And guess what happens? You will learn a whole new set of job skills. You will learn a whole new set of values, and that will position you much better when jobs do open up and more job opportunities. So not only is it personally rewarding, it's also a really smart and gratifying and smart professional thing to do. So we're going to try to help you with no matter what your age is, to be able to inspire you and help you be a part of all these great things. Somebody asked, um, obviously, Long Island University is in New York. Is this something, uh, if they're not in the USA, like she's in Canada, can mm -hmm. they get involved as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, so much of it is virtual. And what's amazing is we started talking about this even before the coronavirus. And we said, gosh, let's really make this truly a global institute. It is based at LIU and it makes so much sense because of the incredible history at LIU and they're at the helm of this all um, and their incredible leadership, which I mentioned earlier and running, they created the app with me. Uh, they're managing the app. So they're very much hands-on in all of this, but we also wanted it to be a virtual location. And we talked about even pre-coronavirus because now everybody's learning about Zooms and learning about everything. Yeah. <laughs> but we talked about all of that even before this, which is what's so amazing. And said so we wanted to really interconnect the world because the world is so connected virtually. And so that's why we were so perfectly timed and so appropriately timed given what's happening in the world. All of this had been in the works. And then of course, every, you know, it's funny, I've had a number of my friends say, oh, you know, gosh, I, you know, I've been watching TV and I've been, you know, just sitting around. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I haven't gotten a moment's rest because I'm working on the Global Service Institute that's about to launch, you know, because we've been so excited about doing this. And also because you're in Canada, you can go onto that app wherever you are in the world. I know you had a, a viewer there also who's in South Africa, no matter where you are in the globe. Yeah. You can go on there, you type in where you are, and you'll find different opportunities. And if there isn't one that fits you, the other thing that's kind of neat on the app, if there isn't anything that fits you, you're going to get an alert when something does fit you. Maybe it comes up in a week from now or two weeks from now, there's going to be a perfect fit. You'll get an alert sent to you that there's an update. But also go, if you go to globalserviceinstitute.org, that most, a lot of that is virtual, like the Eisenhower discussion tomorrow. It's at noon Eastern time, but wherever you are in the world, you can join us virtually. You can submit questions and you can be a part of it because we really want it to be a global effort. What an extraordinary thing too, and it really has taken off so beautifully. There is the website there, globalserviceinstitute.org. Write that down, folks. And if you want to watch this episode again or share this episode, you can see it there. Uh, there's so many extraordinary things, like you mentioned, that are developing with this, this institute. Um, what would you say is the overall, and there's several I know, but what is the overall hope and mission and desire for the institute when you look at it uh, in the total framework of the, the grand scheme of things with how the Institute is going to continue to progress and inspire and impact lives in such a glorious way, Rita? Well, it was so neat. And, uh, you know, I think big. It is uh, really, it is limitless. And that's what's so exciting because service does mean so much to different people. 
And I see us as sort of a modern day Peace Corps and instilling those incredible values in people of all generations. And I really do believe, as I said a few minutes ago, Jim, that I really do believe that this is going to be around for generations to come because that value, and I think about as somebody also when I'm hiring somebody and I look at a resume and I look at who, you know, who is this person? Is this person obviously, first of all, are they qualified for the position? Do they have those job skills? But then you look at the individual and say, who is this individual? Is this a qualified better? Add, you know, kind of intrinsic values, add character building values, get along with other people, believes in giving back. And when you look at it and you see, well, this person has been involved in internships. This person has also maybe sought even professional work that's been tied to service. This person was a graduate with these courses under their belt. This person participated. And by the way, we have students every step of the way. We had students also give us input on the app. We've had students give us input in terms of speaker ideas, um, all these different layers and gotten so you know heavily involved. We're gonna have fellowships, we're gonna have scholarships. Um, but I think that we are really creating the next generation of model global citizens of all ages, because there are so many people out there that want to give back, that want to help, that want to feel like there's something that they want to do to have a life of purpose. And I think especially because of what's happened with the coronavirus, where people were stuck at home, but they also did start to, you know, people realized how important family was. They started to look back at their life and go, you know what? What do I want to do? How can I contribute? They're seeing, you know, what's happening or losing loved ones or the economy or losing a job. And they're sort of stepping back. And I think and really appreciating values that matter and people that matter in their lives. And I think this is just a great way that you can be involved. And I think what's so neat is that there are so many different ways. We're going to be bringing in some programs to show, okay, maybe there's ways in philanthropy you want to be involved. Maybe you also want to be, maybe you're a young person who wants to be involved in reading to elderly people or visiting veterans or going to an animal shelter. Everybody wants to serve in different levels. Everybody has different capacities. And because of the world we're in right now, there'll be a lot of virtual volunteering as well. But this is going to be like something that has never been done before, interconnecting people around the world, creating again that sort of modern day you know, global peace corps of greater good of people with values. And that's why it's not just going to help the individuals. It really will help generations to come. And I think about all the things that I've done in my life. And I'm so humbled, Jim, when I hear you reading some of those things that I've done. I've been so blessed. But to be able to give back and to give back in such a beautiful way and do this with Long Island University, I think to me, this is going to be uh, the greatest thing for me in my life and hopefully the most influential for the next generation. It's really extraordinary. And, uh, you know, when I heard that you were the chair and uh, affiliated with my alma mater, with the wonderful university, I said, of course it's Rita. And, and I'm sure a lot of people have said that. I, uh, just knowing, um, like Lou Grant said to Mary Tyler Moore, you've got <laughs> spunk. <laughs> you, you really, really do. I've never do. been called boring or lazy. <laughs> No, which is so true. And I can tell people, uh, I mean, you've won, I know you probably hate this, but uh, three-time Emmy winner, Matrix Award, Headliner Award, Jack Anderson Award for Journalism Excellence, selected by Cosmopolitan Magazine as Fun and Fearless Female, recipient of the that's Ellis, a fun one. that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> Ellis Island Medal of Honor as well. Lequilensa Freedom Award. You again frequently have hosted the National Memorial Day Parade, broadcast to all U.S. military installations around the world, which is a beautiful thing, Rita. And Troopathon, as you mentioned, the Star Studded TV telecast broadcast nationwide, raised millions of dollars for care packages sent to active. Uh, duty service uh, members, which I think is a beautiful thing as well. You were also awarded the esteemed Yellow Ribbon Medal of Freedom. This is just some of what is uh, in your uh, feather uh, cap there. It's just really extraordinary. And it's it's all done out of love and soulfulness and inspiration and, and passion. I mean, I know the statues, the awards, the certificates, the plaques, the accolades are beautiful to have and wonderful to look at, but it's not why you do what you do, is it? No, it's not. And, and you know, I love being able to make a difference. And I think, Jim, as I've been seeing what's been happening, and again, 
we thought of this even prior to the coronavirus, but I tell everybody it certainly got turbocharged, you yeah, know, because sure did. we were, you know, exactly positioned for this moment. And I thought about how timely this is and how important this is. And again, not even as a journalist, here I am, you know, an American a citizen. And, you know, I've had friends who I've lost during the coronavirus. Yeah. Um, you know, so. I've been watching what's been happening around the world. It's been a very difficult time. 2020 has been a really tough time for everybody. And I thought, I want to be able to do something where we can really help. We're really in a wonderful position to be able to make a difference. And with this incredible vision that Long Island University had, the incredible resources, the incredible base that they already had established, and, and sort of pairing this together, let's do something transformative, let's do something bold, let's do something different, and let's pardon, help in the recovery of this country. I, you know, I didn't want to just sit back, I wanted to be able to roll up my sleeves and do something that would truly make a difference and help at this incredibly pivotal moment in history. And to be able to be a part of that and partner with your great alma mater makes me so incredibly proud. And already, you know, it's, you know, it's been so beautiful. Um, you know, even the response that we've had from charities, you know, we've reached out to charities even before we officially launched. We had a number of the charities and, and when we were making calls, we had a number of charities who were crying on the phone with us saying, this is so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is, this is, this, you know, they were just so touched. And even the board members you brought up, you know, we've had a number of these, we have so many, you know, wonderful, incredible people that are of note, like Dion Warwick and Buzz Aldrin and Joe Theismann and Evander and so many of these different incredible human beings. They are that before they are celebrities. They are truly remarkable human beings. And they were so excited to be a part of this. And the other thing that's also neat too, also on the board, I have General Wesley Clark, uh, who ran as a you know presidential candidate, uh, a diehard Democrat. And then I also have Michael Reagan, son of Michael Reagan, you know, certainly a, a, a diehard Republican conservative. But all of these people are together unified for this incredible mission of service and really wanted to be a part of this. And Gary Sinise, you know, who's such a fine human being, Bob Woodruff of ABC, um, you know, all these people who I don't think have ever been bandied together. I thought, let's put together a superstar board, but really a superstar board of human beings, of people who epitomize giving back and who walk the walk. And every single one of them was like, yeah. I am in. I love this, Rita. And Absolutely. they are excited to have that kind of impact, too. General so I, I, got, I got a good team with me. And you I, sure I think do. I have a with me too now that i know yes absolutely absolutely sign me up and you've got the general too general ann dunworthy she's a oh, part of it that's an incredible, incredible. I'm america's first female uh, four-star general yes. she was it maybe took me all of three seconds when i took uh, sign me up rita i'm in i love this because they love the idea of being able to have a huge impact and yeah. to teach the next generation and those values that especially those people like ann dunwoody and those people who've been there on the front lines, um, have they understand what service is. And people who've helped veterans like Gary Sinise and so many of these others we've talked about and Bob Woodruff, who've done so much to help the veterans, they understand what service is. But mm -hmm. to be able to pass that on and to be able to create model global citizens, how incredible to be able to have that impact at this time in history, Absolutely. to be able to help in the recovery. That's, that's a neat thing to be a part of and I'm blessed. Robert Irvine, of course, we know the fabulous. Yeah, oh, a great veteran yeah. supporter. Yes. Amazing. A box, legendary boxer of Ender Holyfield, part of this as well, mm -hmm. which is extraordinary. You mentioned Joe Theismann. And, you know, working in broadcasting, working in media, I'm sure you'll attest to uh, being in the public eye. Sometimes you do feel like you're walking um, a tightrope, right? A little bit, but nobody walks a tightrope like who's part of this wonderful, <laughs> fantastic, you know, who I'm talking about. I know Nick, where you're going. Nick yeah. Walenda. <laughs> Even Nick has jumped right in. I love that. Yeah. And by the way, that that's the rope there. Everybody said, what is he doing at the golf club? Like, no, no, no. That is actually part of the high wire and he's holding on to it. And Nick is the guy who many of you will recognize the famous Walenda family. Yes. He's the guy who walked over, remember the erupting volcano. Yes. Uh, he's probably the craziest person in the world and definitely the bravest man in the world. And I thought if we're gonna carve a brave new path, I need one of the bravest men in the world doing it. 
Um, but Nick is also, what people don't realize too, not only is he obviously incredibly gutsy and he's done these huge events with I think it's like 100 million people watching around the world as he's walking through, whether it's you know skyscrapers or erupting volcanoes and all these amazing feats that he's done and his family has done for years. He is also a man of faith. He's also a man of giving back and does incredible amount of charities and incredible amount of humanitarian work. And that's why I'm also really honored to have him on board for this mission. He's an incredible man. And there's the website again for everybody, globalserviceinstitute.org. Um, people asking, how do you have time in the day? I, I get that asked, asked that question all the time now that I added this show to the roster of things I'm doing. <laughs> But when it's things you care about and things that speak to your heart, you always find time, right, Rita? Always find time and also are deeply motivated um, to do it. And for me, at a time right now where there has been, and your viewers know this so well, and you know this so well, my friend, you know, there's been so much tough news out there and it's been such a divisive time in the world yeah. too. And such a, you know, just difficult economic and every, you know, so many issues with the virus. It's so nice to be able to focus something constructive and positive and game changing. And that is what motivates me. And that's what's been motivating always my whole life. Um, but to be able to give back and to be able to do this and to have an impact around the world and to include all of you that are watching now. Um, is really an incredible gift for me. I tell everybody, you know, people always say, is there one thing that you would like in life? And I, I always say, gosh, I wish I didn't have to sleep because <laughs> it really ruins, you know, I'm lucky I don't need a lot of sleep, right. but I always tell people, gosh, I wish I didn't have to sleep because I have so many things I want to work on. And, you know, the, the few hours that I'm sleeping, it's taking me away from thinking and working on other things. <laughs> but knowing you, you sleep like a cat with one eye open. Ready, I do. I do. Ready, ready I to go. I, you know, I have a secret. I actually have a bunch of stickums, post-it notes by my bed because I wake up in the middle of the night and think, okay, I've got to work on this. I got to call this person. Oh, I know what I got to do, or I know a neat program that I got to add to this or do, you know, it, you know, it's uh, it's called uh, creative ideas all the time, 24 <laughs> seven. Exactly. What I love too, which I know you've emphasized, which is a beautiful thing for everybody uh, to realize and appreciate is that the global service Institute is nonpartisan. Everybody, yes. you know, it services everybody. Everybody's welcome to participate. It's really uh, across the board, really celebrating the human condition, right? It is. And it's uh, nonpartisan and nonprofit too, as well. And we wanted to do this literally as a good service to be able to give back. And that's why if you go to Global Service, you'll see all these different things. Again, the Susan Eisenhower one, which at this airing is going to be tomorrow at noon Eastern time. It's free. Then we have Ben Carson again, uh, you know, a different political spectrum that is free. Um, and also the Global Service app is totally free. We just wanted to be able to do something that would make a difference and inspire other people to give back. Um, but I love being able to do something that is positive and unifying. And I really believe that that's the way you can accomplish great things. You know, there is so much uh, divisiveness politically and, and such a difficult time in the world. And to do something where everybody can come together. And, and in fact, you know, it's interesting. General Wesley Clark uh, was excited to hear that Michael Reagan and vice versa because they understood that power in numbers and that the mission of service, this incredibly powerful, inspiring and noble mission of service shouldn't be a political issue. Um, it should be something that that is a human issue, as you point out, Jim. And that's why they have also been, they, they are deeply inspired that it's so many folks. And there's a number of people on my board, I have no idea what political spectrum they're on because it's not important. What is important is that they care about giving back and they're dedicated to that. That's exactly what it's all about. And you have been dedicated to so many beautiful things your entire life. Again, it, it makes such sense. It was such probably a unanimous decision for them to say, look, who's going to be the chair? Rita. Uh, oh, because no, you. knowing you as I do, uh, the, when you walk in, the room lights up. People know that sleeves are going to be rolled up. Empathy is going to be expressed, passion, caring, uh, but also focus. You have this wonderful, and I've mentioned this to you, I think, privately, too, at these events we've been at, too. Uh, you have this wonderful uh, keen ability to be warm and approachable and uh, affable and empathetic while also still maintaining 
the forward movement and the focus and the tenacity and, and making sure, you know, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And that's not something that it comes naturally for everybody to be able to balance all of that uh, so beautifully. And that's kudos to who you are and those who've influenced and inspired your life, uh, your career, but also the essence of who Rita Cosby is ever since you were running around with that recorder, playing reporter as a child. And that's a beautiful thing. You continue to live the Rita Cosby story in such a an authentic way way. Like you said, the Rita Cosby you see on air, hear on air, see in person is the same thing. And, and I've had the same thing said of me when people yeah. see me on television or hear me on radio or whatever, and then they meet me in the supermarket. They're like, wait a minute. Uh, you know, at first we were like afraid to come up to you. We thought, and they realized you're, you're the same person. I'm like, well, why would you not want to be? <laughs> and you right, are, right, you right. are. And, and you and I are both such real people that yes. I don't, you know, know, you know, it's funny. Most times when I'm walking down the street, I have people say, hi, Rita. You know, how are you? Rita? You, you know, and, and I love the fact that they feel comfortable to be able to say that and, um, and feel that because to me, it, I, you know, I, I love the people that I've been able to touch their lives and hope that it's just the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. And you certainly have. I uh, want to say, show you, share with you, because again, very viewer interactive broadcast every night here with our show. Rita, I love that. Th thanks. Yeah. Thanks for making a difference and for oh. heading up the Global Service Institute, which allows us to be able to contribute, give back during this global pandemic. Thanks for inspiring volunteerism and service. And, and you and I Thank have you. both been involved with lots of charitable organizations over the years. And, and I love doing that work because that's really when you're giving back, yes. uh, it, it inspires people to also give back. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Beautiful conversation tonight. Good night, Rita and Jim. Absolutely loved it. Michael Colby, uh, such an inspiring, constructive program. Um, Merlin in Canada again asks, do you think other universities would also jump on the parade? And be a part of this? Would this be something that can grow even beyond? I wonder absolutely. about that. Yeah. 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 By the way, uh, at Merlin, absolutely. Um, and in fact, the great thing about coming in um, with Long Island University, they already have relationships, as you know, Jim, um, firsthand with a number of other universities throughout the globe. And they've also had a global sort of exchange in a variety of countries, including Australia. They, I mean, South America, they've had a number of different countries down there. There's been really kind of a, a vast reach already that's been established. And that has made it also really exciting because immediately we already have those connections and we will just enhance upon what they already have. And uh, hopefully, look, I would hope that in a few years from now that there are many universities throughout the globe that are looking at service as a huge part of their component. And we've already had a number of them call, even in the last, you know, it's only been, uh, what has it been, about a week and a half or so. And already we've had a number of universities reach out and say, oh my gosh, uh, I want to learn about that. Or even administrators or teachers uh, telling me, gosh, I want to go. I want to come to Long Island University. I want to teach there now. I want to be a part of that now. Or I want to bring that home back to my campus. So I think we're going to be doing a lot of exchanges, but there's already a wonderful base there, which is also a great thing too, because there's already an incredible connectivity and an incredible respect already out there in the arena for Long Island University. So that, uh, that actually uh, gave us a great head start. Absolutely. Great place to be. And uh, on a personal note, uh, there's another question here for you. And Nancy asks, Rita, do you plan to write another book? <laughs> ah, you know what? Um, I may write another book. And, and sort of a hint out there is my father's story has taken sort of a whole other new layer. And I've learned some new things that even my father did not know about my family history. So I may end up writing something about my uh, uh, another generation secret past. How's that for a good hint? You know, so Ooh. it either, uh, it either Stay will be, tuned. Maybe, uh, <laughs> yeah, it may be um, and I almost think the best story of my family has yet to be told. And we just uh, made some interesting discoveries in the last few years. That um, is exciting. And also another great story, not just of my family, but also indicative of the 
incredible heroism of the people of that era too. Mm. And I feel like whenever we can do that, yeah. you know, if I can be an example, but an example of, of so many people who rose up under extraordinary circumstances um, that I'm happy to do it. So I, I think there's probably a, a part two coming soon. I, hasn't, I haven't started on it yet, but there is. I think it's in me. First, I got to take care of the Global Service Institute first. <laughs> <laughs> There's a world that needs helping, absolutely. And you've been doing it brilliantly, beautifully, um, soulfully, heartfully, and uh, just extraordinarily. And, and I just am so moved and touched by, you. you know, your presence whenever I'm in the same room. I think we're kindred spirits in so many different yeah. ways. And I think that's why we've stayed in touch and we've clicked. We understand what what it's all about and and the opportunities we have and the platforms we have to inspire and lift people up and as we do that we are inspired and lifted as well and it's just a wonderful full circle situation isn't it rita it is it is and and it's funny i think about jim too um as you were showing the pictures earlier that you and i have done a number of events together and and uh, sort of kindred spirits connect and I love what you're doing also here. I'm so proud to be a part and visiting Lovety Hall. Um, I hope I can become an honorary member in some you way, are. you know. You um, are. And, uh, and I love what you're doing too, because I think in this time right now, when we can lift each other up and spread this positive message and, and how beautiful that you're doing it so wonderfully every night. I'm not surprised that you're doing what you're doing, my friend. And obviously all your fans and all those wonderful viewers out there appreciate your story too, because you're just, you're an incredible human being. And I'd love to have you be a part um, of this Institute and all of you that are watching out there any way that you want to be a part, you just make sure you get a hold of us there at the Global Service Institute. And if you know a charity that needs help, make sure they also join the Global Service app too as well right away, because we can instantly get them some service, uh, some volunteers and some help on a whole bunch of layers. So, um, so this is just, to me, it's been amazing to be a part of this with you. And I love what you and, uh, and all the uh, love at ease are. I'd be happy to come back anytime. You are more than welcome. And with viewers around the world who've been expressing their love and joy and their, um, the fact that we've been inspiring and as well as informing and educating them tonight, but inspiring them to, to take action and to be a part of wonderful things like this, I think is what also makes this so, so glorious. And um, you're truly amazing, my friend. And I love when we have an opportunity to, to connect. And this, I've been, I know you and I have been looking forward to this for a couple of months and we wanted to time it right when this was launched because it's a it's a beautiful story and it's a wonderful institute. And again, at LIU, that phenomenal yeah. university system in New York, uh, you're surrounded by amazing people and uh, you've just got so much love surrounding you as well, supporting you. I know that drives you forward, Rita. Thanks so much for spending this amount of time. Now, you and I had said, we chat for about an hour. We've been going for two and it feels like it's been 45 minutes, right? It does. It it's does. Just... You know, it's so funny. I first looked, I just looked at the time just now and it has flown by and it's a testament to you and a testament to your great audience too around the world. And, uh, I, and to me, thank you for inspiring me and, uh, and keeping uh, that spirit up too, because we need need to keep this positivity at this time and to be able to make a difference is an incredible gift. Thank you very much, my friend. You're welcome back anytime. And I'm so happy that uh, you joined us and continued success with everything you're doing. Uh, my blessings to Tom and to your entire family. I hope we get to break bread and see each other again real soon. Keep me posted on all. And again, congratulations on this announcement of being the chair of the LIU Global Service Institute. Well-earned, well-deserved, perfect choice. And I wish you nothing but success and love to help out in any way that I can. Thank you. And, and also, boy, I'm so, how fortuitous you are an LIU grad. So everybody, it shows that LIU is a great education. Look what it did, this guy, <laughs> you know? That's so it. it's great. And, and Jim, I adore you, I love you, and thank you for having me on. It was wonderful to be with you and, and all your wonderful, wonderful viewers around the world. And keep up the great, amazing work, my friend. Thank you for, it was a blessing to be with you. You as well. Right back at you, Rita. We appreciate it. You have a wonderful night. Blessings to you. And we will chat again real soon. Okay. Thank you. Look forward to it, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye, Jim. Bye-bye. Incredible, wouldn't you say? She's extraordinary. I could chat with her for not hours, but days. And it did 
it's two hours and we were chatting. Oh, we'll probably, you know, chat about an hour or so. I knew it would go longer just because there's so much to share, so much to um, share with you to inspire you to maybe do some things in your own life that perhaps uh, allow you to be inspired and allow you to inspire others. I'd love for you to um, check that out in terms of the, uh, the website. It's uh, Long Island University, which is based in New York. And, and it was really amazing because uh, she and I were just chatting and uh, she had mentioned the Global Service Institute. This was a major announcement. We were going to have her on, I think it was like in August. Uh, we had a couple of different dates. We were going to have Rita on as my special guest. Um, but then, you know, she had mentioned, Jim, there's really something very exciting I wanted to announce and reveal, and I'd love to do it on your show. And I said, absolutely, let's, let's, you know, so the couple of other dates we were looking at, we shuffled, you know, our show schedule and whatever we could do. And then it turned out that this date was so ideal because of the recent development of her becoming the chair of the Long Island University uh, Global Service uh, Institute which is absolutely extraordinary. And again, so many people um, from VIPs and politicians and celebs and, and everyday people just involved in it uh, for the greater good of us all. There's the website. Uh, there it is, globalserviceinstitute.org. Wherever you are actually around the world, we have viewers across the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia. Um, uh, every night there's viewers who watch our show for the entertainment, for the levity, also the inspiration, the information, the education. Tonight was a very important show, especially because we've been talking a lot on this broadcast series about positivity, about lifting one another up, about sharing our experiences, our collective experiences, and trying to inspire each other. Whether we inspire each other through music, through art, um, through science, health and wellness, food, the Art of Conversation, that's what we're doing here on the Gym Master Show Live. We're not only bringing you great entertainment and, and levity and other cool things that we do here nightly, uh, but also making you think, making you pause, breathe deeply through the diaphragm, as we always say, and make you think about life. And this is such an appropriate uh, time to do that, especially with everything that we've dealt with, as Rita so beautifully illustrated uh, and described for us everything that we have talked about and dealt with, uh, which has been extraordinary in this particular year of uh, 2020. Uh, what a wonderful time to be a part of something like that, where volunteerism, uh, that true spirit of volunteerism is front and center, where people are of all genders and income levels and backgrounds and uh, thoughts and influences and, and political parties, no matter what you know, it's nonpartisan, nonprofit, uh, all come together for the greater good of us all. And uh, it's based, yes, in New York at Long Island University's uh, wonderful university system. Uh, however, it doesn't matter where you live, you can be a part of this, as are many who don't just live in the greater New York City area, they live across the country and other countries as well. Globalserviceinstitute.org, again, a very special announcement. Uh, Rita Cosby, again, um, a brilliant journalist, a wonderful best-selling author, and um, somebody who loves to give back. Some Her stories are extraordinary, aren't they? They're very touching. Uh, several of them I've heard previously in conversations with her at events we've been at and galas and a whole host of other things. She's very supportive of veterans. Um, she's, as I said in the introduction, and I think you got a taste of it even more, maybe you've watched Rita on television, on network television. You saw her on different shows. You heard her on the radio. You've read her uh, books, but you didn't get a chance to really know the essence of the person as deeply maybe as you did tonight on this show. And that's what I love doing um, as a television personality, radio host, multimedia, the whole thing uh, in my professional work and here on our series that we do every night. We're here 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, worldwide at YouTube at Gym Masters TV and also um, at Facebook at Gym Masters TV and Periscope and Twitch at Gym Masters TV. Uh, it's really, really beautiful. And um, it's just very cool. It really is when you have an opportunity to share in this way. And I love her story about, you know, her father, which is very touching. I've heard that previously, but she really 
She really um, shared even more tonight with all of you, and maybe it has inspired you to think about the people who matter in your life, maybe to rekindle a relationship, maybe to dust things off and bring yourself um, when you can. Obviously, we can't necessarily get together at this point. Still, pick up the phone, write the letter, send the email, do a Zoom, uh, connect with the people that matter in your life as well. We're only here once, folks, uh, as far as I know, unless we there are other ways to come back. Some people do think we do, but what I'm generally saying is seize the moment, and that's what you have to do. Seize the moments that life brings us right now. We're here. We've got our health. You know, um, that's what you can do. And, and, you know, you don't have to take on the world. You don't have to conquer the world. Um, but you, there's little things you can do every day to make the world a brighter place. A uh, little thing. And Rita does that every single day. I try to do it. I know many of you do it uh, for your family, your loved ones, your communities. Um, that's what's beautiful and that's what's so important. Uh, so another wonderful positive show that it turns out all of the shows on the Jim Master Show Live broadcast series here tend to have a positive bent, which is beautiful. And I encourage everybody, as we always say, um, the YouTube channel is Jim Masters TV. We would love it if you subscribe to the channel because we're pouring in lots of great positive content from the Jim Master Show Live series as well as Master's Mantras, uh, which is an inspirational video series I've been doing for quite some time that grew out of some positive posts I've done over the years on uh, Facebook. And um, we have a good time doing that for you as well. You can also find me on Instagram uh, at Jim Masters TV, as well as Twitter, Periscope, and Twitch. And of course, Facebook at Jim Masters TV. Again, uh, at the time of this broadcast, now if you watch this later, past September 23rd, then that will be past, of course, the uh, Susan Eisenhower uh, conversation. However, as Rita detailed, there's so many other speakers and events coming up throughout. So if you ever miss one, uh, just go to globalserviceinstitute.org to constantly keep abreast of other events and ways you can participate and other phenomenal conversations and speakers and so much more. Uh, that'll be happening. and uh, But we will show the graphic uh, because, again, it's an amazing event. Susan Eisenhower, again, globalserviceinstitute.org is the website. You, If you want to go and watch that, uh, which is tomorrow, it is noon Eastern, Rita is hosting it. Guest is Susan Eisenhower, author of How Ike Led. Of course, we're talking about uh, President Eisenhower. And uh, it's a free virtual event from the Global Service Institute. And uh, that's just one of many that are happening. What an extraordinary career, wouldn't you say? Uh, with our illustrious, wonderful guest and also personal dear friend, Rita Cosby. Uh, there she is. Wasn't that a phenomenal story uh, when she was chatting with the Pope and was able to use her uh, Spanish prowess to be able to uh, speak with him fluently and you can see the joy in both of their eyes and of course I love the stories Afghanistan and being on the front lines there getting this story and covering uh, the latest uh, in some really remote and difficult locations uh, King Abdullah of Jordan too having an opportunity to meet him I love the story she said about Walter Cronkite uh, that was very very special and uh, to be you know, to get the green light and blessing from Walter Cronkite is extraordinary. As far as some, just some of the people that are involved in the Global Service Institute, and again, extraordinary people. Uh, this is, of course, Nick Walenda, the phenomenal Typer Walker, and, and so much more, the Walenda family. Um, Joe Theismann, legendary football player, of course, and uh, Robert Irvine, phenomenal uh, Chef, culinary expert. Evander Holyfield is part of the Institute. These are all honorary uh, board members as well. And uh, General Ann Dunworthy, we mentioned, and uh, Michael Reagan, son of uh, President Ronald Reagan. And of course, General Wesley Clark as well. Again, everything nonpartisan. 
nonprofit. Uh, legendary astronaut Buzz Aldrin is part of this uh, wonderful institute as well. The incomparable Dion Warwick as well, a brilliant uh, actor. Uh, Gary Sinise and, and many, many others. Uh, really, really very, very cool. And again, as I've mentioned, uh, I've known Rita for years. We've been at social events, terrific parties, gatherings, always when it's something really positive and fun. And uh, yes, her smile does light up a room, as I mentioned. And uh, always a blessing when you have an opportunity to uh, work on projects with her and uh, break bread and have good, deep, solid, important, impactful conversations as we have over the years as well. Talking about the broadcasting industry, comparing notes about our work in television and, and radio and, and print and so much more, but also just talking about uh, life in general. And it's always a blessing to have an opportunity to do that with people that truly, truly care like all of you do. Your comments um, have been extraordinary. Juanita in South Africa, and um, I agree, Michael, such an inspiring, constructive program. And uh, Christine, your comments too. And again, you know, we're a very viewer centric show. So I like to make sure that not only the viewers try to see each other's uh, comments, but also our guests. And I love seeing the comments too, as your host, but also to see the comments that the, uh, are about the guests. I think that really warms their heart and uh, shows how viewer centric we are really making a difference. You're right, Christine, uh, and heading up the Global Service Institute, which allows us to be able to contribute, give back during this global pandemic and even beyond this time in our lives. Uh, it's so apropos that she's doing this and, and, and the people that are a part of the team at LIU. I applaud um, everybody at LIU for being a part of this. Uh, and again, that is uh, my alma mater where I went to uh, college and studying university. And she was right. I was uh, on air on the radio station. I wrote for the school newspaper. I was uh, president of the debate team at LIU uh, at their post campus and, and several other organizations. Um, actually, you know, it was really cool. They had a, in addition to that, they had this really cool thing. I think they still do. It was called a student activity grant. And I loved being a part of the campus and, and the university. I lived on campus the whole time there and um, while pursuing the degree. And uh, I just loved being a part of um, the various organizations and clubs and groups that the campus uh, had. And a lot of them were tied to what I do for a living, you know, communications and uh, broadcasting. And we studied media law and economics and theater and film and production, television and radio, creative writing, journalism, all, all of the above. But as far as some of the clubs, they used to do something really nice. Uh, I'm sure they probably still do it, where if you were in a certain amount of organizations or clubs with, while on campus, um, they gave you like a grant. So I used to always get this grant each semester, and we would use that towards uh, food or books, things of that nature, which was really, really terrific. I was going to tell her that uh, maybe I'll text her after I said, if I see her on campus, if I visit the campus, which I've done several times, um, if we're in the cafeteria, lunch will be on me, <laughs> but I don't know if my food card still would work because it's been a bit since we were there. So I don't know if the food card, if I could, you know, swipe the food card at the cashier at the cafeteria on campus, it might not work. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll pay for the lunch. <laughs> so, um, Thanks for the great comments, everybody. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, a very special episode. I knew that you were going to enjoy this. And um, again, as I said, when we started this series 20 weeks ago, this was a series that was, that's a talk show. So it's going to be something different every night, uh, something for everybody. You'll always be entertained and informed, educated, learn something, hopefully, and be inspired by whatever it is we're doing and whoever is with us. And even if it's just me chatting with you guys, because we do host chats, pop-up shows. Last Sunday, we did a whole couple of hours talking about our favorite foods and recipes. I mean, this show is an all-around entertainment lifestyle talk show series. And the reason why I have it that way, as opposed to just being about music or just being about theater or just being about health or this, 
is because uh, I like a lot of different things and I think a lot of our audience does as well. So we're always going to have a lot of cool different topics, themes, guests, and so much more on our series here. Um, and again, really, really an opportunity to share it all with you every single night is, is truly, truly a blessing. Thanks for all the great comments. Um, I really appreciate this uh, beautiful conversation tonight. Good night, Rita and Jim. Thank you very much. And Jeff says, oh, yes, Rita has a smile that instantly lights up a room. <laughs> and a uh, huge heart as big as outdoors. Yes, we agree. And Anne Orzniak, love tonight. So wonderful. Uh, you give your time and talent to this great uh, initiative, to the Institute. Thank you, Rita. Absolutely. Sue uh, says, loving this interview. Both of you are such selfless, fantastic people. Thank you very much, Sue. Uh, I really love that. I appreciate that. And I'm speaking for Rita as well. Uh, I know she loves and appreciates these words that she's been seeing throughout. Al Harris, good to see you, Al. Uh, we've been at gala events as well. Truly great interview. Well done, guys. Thank you. I appreciate that, Al. And we're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Live. Just a moment, I'm going to tell you about the extraordinary guests and a special event that's happening this week as well. Good to see you, Al. Uh, thanks for sharing your story with us, Rita. Good show. She saw these comments and uh, we'll see this in the archive as well. Thank you, Rita, for coming on the show tonight. Renee, thank you for being here. I knew you guys would really love this conversation. And you can see it again in the archive at uh, Jim Masters TV on YouTube. Thanks, Jim, for the interesting and amazing guest tonight. Rita, thank you for all your hard work that you're doing as well. Sherry, and thank you for tuning in, Aristine. Sherry says, you're definitely a lovity, Rita. Again, everybody that pops on our show as a guest, they really like this whole lovity, positive vibe experience. It's something that this show was designed to have positivity and inspiration, but the whole lovity theme developed. And I think it's a beautiful thing. So Sherry, thank you very much. Christine, it was truly our pleasure to have you with us on this show this evening, uh, sharing such beautiful, inspirational stories. Thanks, Rita. Uh, we thank her as well. And beautifully uh, said, Christine Clifton. Juanita in South America. Great interview, Jim. Rita is an amazing woman and inspiration. Thank you very much, uh, Juanita, there in South Africa. She loved being in South Africa, and she would love to return. I have yet to come to South Africa. Uh, that would be a glorious excursion. I've been to a lot of different places, but South Africa, for me, uh, as far as uh, my television work, my broadcast work, hasn't taken me yet to South Africa. But uh, with all the work that I do uh, in my professional life, maybe at some point that would happen. Uh, but so wonderful that you're watching us uh, and so many are watching us literally all around the world live and then many watch later when it's archived on YouTube at Jim Masters TV and you sort of binge watch our entire series, 20 weeks of shows, over 140 shows back to back to back, each one unique, each one different. Kathy says, that was amazing. Uh, that was an awesome night. Thank you, Rita. You are very welcome. And uh, Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas, Marilyn Hammond, thank you, Rita. She thanks you as well, as do I. We really appreciate it. Crystal Nolan, who's watching in Connecticut, thank you for sharing the amazing story, inspiration. God bless you. Absolutely. And um, when she watches this again and shares this uh, with everybody, uh, she'll see all these additional comments too. Yes, Sherry says, Rita is incredible. Thank you for sharing your friend with us, Jim. My pleasure. Uh, Rita was one of the first people I asked when I launched this series 20 weeks ago. And again, as I mentioned, we um, had different dates that we were going to have her come on. But then she mentioned this really special thing that she was involved in <clears throat> that was coming together pretty quickly over the summertime. And she was working tirelessly, she and everybody else involved in the, uh, the wonderful institute, the Global Service Institute. And um, she wanted to time it perfectly so she can really speak to it um, in a way that uh, mattered and was um, very detailed and very passionate. And she knocked it out of the park with that tonight. So we're so happy that she was able to join us tonight and uh, very happy that you were able to join us tonight as well, Sherry. A real pleasure. 
Uh, Al says, Jim, you rock. Thank you very much, Al. So do you and everybody watching. We really appreciate that. Um, that's so cool. She's been to many Kiss the Monkeys events. Yes, and I've been to those as well. And that's where we all got together. Uh, so many wonderful fundraisers and so many cool things. Ernestine, good night to you as well. Kathleen, uh, thank you very much. And once again, Kathleen, and I'll be uh, contacting you directly because we're friends. Thank you once again for this early birthday gift. The birthday's on Thursday. Loving this New York Mets official wine glass. It's very heavy. It's beautiful. I know it's a collector's item and uh, a very special uh, treat, Kathleen. I thank you and toast to and toast to all of you and toast to my special guest Rita as well. Uh, but we love this. And this is um, just so you know, I know I said I was going to use it just for the show. And if you notice, the glasses are getting bigger and bigger. But I've been using it throughout the day too, Kathleen, because I really love it. It's cool. And it's got the, uh, there it is, the Mets logo on there. We displayed this or debuted it on our Foodie Festival host chat episode on Sunday. Just a little uh, pink lemonade in there. That's all, refreshing pink lemonade. Uh, thanks, guys. This is uh, really uh, wonderful to have you all here. And Kathleen, you're a true blessing as well. Um, Kathy Short says, you do make this world a brighter place, Jim, and we love you. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Love you guys back. It's a... Uh, it's back and forth as far as I'm concerned. You know, I like to, uh, like Rita does as well, uh, we feed off the, the energy of exciting things like this and uh, try to give it back and ever, however we can. You know, we might be skilled in terms of being uh, professional about what we do, but underneath all of that, you know, uh, the glitz and glamour or whatever it may be of it all, we really do truly care about people and truly care about the, the greater good of the world. And I'm a Libra, and Libra starts, I think, tomorrow. <laughs> and that, uh, we tend to be people who uh, like balance and harmony. We like to uh, provide balance and harmony for the world. So we're really working our tails off this year, trying to seek out balance and harmonious uh, situations for the world, as well as for us as well. Also, we're, we're people who, um, we see both sides of a question. If you pose a question, we don't always jump to the answer. I remember when we were uh, looking at different houses, different things, even uh, purchasing a car, I would always like do a pro-con list. Uh, okay, what are all the pros of this? Before we decide, what are all the cons? And do the pros outweigh the cons? Do the cons outweigh the pros? What should we do? What should we do? And then every once in a while, um, I'll just decide on something quick. And that will be very liberating. <laughs> Let's just grab that one. That sounds good. That looks good. Let's just take, and that way you don't have to do the pro con list and all that. Like I mentioned too, when we go on trips sometimes, and family will tell you, when you get in the car with Jim, you never know where you end up. And we've gone on trips where we've driven through, you know, the countryside of New England. Uh, through Connecticut and Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Rhode Island, Maine, all in the same day during the fall foliage season. And everybody in the car is like, where are we headed? Where are we going? And I'm like, who knows? We've got instrumental music playing in the car. We're, we're having a wonderful time together, communal time together. And uh, there's no rhyme or reason. And I didn't strategically plan or format out where we're headed. Uh, I don't even know where we're headed, but we're just taking the car and we're all experiencing this collectively. And um, some of those times, most of those times are, if not all those times, are some of the most beautiful times because we're all experiencing it together. So we stop off at little cafes and have some hot apple cider or hot cocoa. Or be a little different this year. You might just drive through and not stop. Who knows? But um, there's some cool places that we uh, check out along the way and then head over towards upstate New York. And during what's happening very soon here <clears throat> in the Northeast is the beautiful fall foliage. Uh, so you get in the car, you just sometimes you just got to go. You don't, don't always plan everything out. Uh, what did 
Bastian Steven, the wonderful singer, songwriter, musician, who was a brilliant guest last night. We had so much fun with him, and he's really another inspiring person. And he loved being on. We chatted again. I, I chat usually with all the guests afterwards, and he absolutely loved it. Lacey Carpenter is excited to come back. She loved it as well. Uh, Arnie Burton, who was our guest, the phenomenal legendary actor. Today's his birthday. Happy birthday, Arnie. Um, they have such a great time. They want to come back. And... Um, Bastian was amazing. And remember his song, um, you know, just lose yourself, meaning just sometimes just go. Don't even think about it. Just live life and enjoy. Have a great night, Jim. Good night. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, you too, Kathleen. You take care. We're going to get ready to wrap up. Just want to Try to see as many of these as I can. I try to see them after the show as well, but I like to see them during. I know that's why you guys are here live. You can always watch these shows in the archives, but I know many of you want to feel like you're part of the show, and that's a beautiful thing. Thanks, Jim. Rita, love it is. Another great positive night. You as well, Mary Bishop. Thank you very much. And tonight was amazing. Thank you, Jim. Wishing you and all love it is a very good night. You as well, Anne. Have a good night, everyone. From Renee in Iowa, you too. Kathy, good night, Jim. Wonderful show tonight. See you tomorrow. I love hearing that. Amazing guests tomorrow. I'll tell you in a minute some of the incredible guests that are coming up. Um, I can tell you that next Monday on the 27th, Michael Longoria is going to be here. He, he's incredible. He was in, he's in uh, the Midtown Men, but also Jersey Boys. Yes, the Broadway run of Jersey Boys. He's a brilliant solo artist as well. Uh, brilliant singer, actor, dancer, Michael Longoria. He's been in so many great Broadway productions and um, really, really a cool cat. And he's coming on Monday. That's an exclusive. Uh, and I'll tell you about the others in just a second. Thanks for her. She's great. She's going to make it really big with everything she's doing. Uh, yeah, I think she already has, but her big heart is what's taking her through. We're talking about our friend Rita. Cosby. Good night to you, or actually good night to us, and I think it's day where you are, right? Thank you very much for watching in South Africa. Show filled with inspiration, positivity, and of course, love it. It was a joy watching two friends and great conversation. It does feel like that sometimes, doesn't it? Like you guys are there and you're sort of, you know, watching myself and the guests chat and you're in on it and you can ask questions, you can participate, but it's like we're friends. And what's really cool with some of these guests is there's a few guests where I've met them for the very first time on the show. But the conversation we have is as if we've been friends for 20 years. <clears throat> and that's beautiful when that happens. Uh, good night to all the lovelies. Sleep well and stay safe. Have I tried the corn casserole? Not yet. And that was from our Foodie Festival host uh, chat episode which, wow, a lot of people are watching. A lot of people were watching when we did it live. We did a special time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, Sunday. And it was just me and all of you. And we were talking about food and showing pictures and recipes. It was a really cool show, a lot of fun. Um, but a lot of people are watching it on YouTube. I, I'm looking at the views. And a lot of people are watching that episode on YouTube, which is really, really cool. So we're going to try that soon. Good night to all the lovelies. Sleep well. Stay safe. You as well. A couple more coming in, and then we'll get ready to wrap right up here. Yep, Libra 2. Exhausting year this is for Libras. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Uh, we're working hard uh, trying to achieve balance and harmony for ourselves and for bring bring everybody together. And it's, But you keep at it, Juanita. The two J's, Jim and Juanita. Or you can call me James, you can call me Jim, you can call me Jimmy. All names apply to me. Just don't call me late for supper. Juanita, what a great team. And Jennifer Barry. Jennifer Barry is always inspirational. Another J, Jennifer. Pulled up my upper. So what did you do? What happened now? I pulled my upper leg, left leg muscle. I've been quiet tonight, couch surfing. Uh, well, we hope that uh, you will be feeling better soon. Just keep your leg elevated. Put some ice on it and just relax. Maybe have some, I don't know if it's cold where you are, or hot cocoa maybe, and maybe some chicken soup. And just don't do not do any uh, Jenna Zen dancing tonight. When you hear our closing theme, usually you like to jump off the couch, uh, dive off the couch, jump over the coffee table, and uh, dance to uh, the gym master's singers and orchestra with our 
closing and our opening theme tonight. Don't do it, Jen. Just relax. Take care. There will always be tomorrow. The music will be there for you tomorrow. You'd be well. Kathleen, everything. Smiles and prayers and hearts and kisses and good stuff, Kathleen. Thank you very much. Back at you. Crystal, good night, Jim and everyone. Thank you for another fantastic show. My pleasure, my pleasure. And Allison says, the corn casserole is good. Do I need the recipe? You know what? Absolutely. And we were doing that on Sunday. But hey, recipes. I, I got the recipe for uh, Willie's Dutch apple pie. My family actually asked for that. So I'm going to send it off to them too. And hopefully they'll be making it. Everybody listening? Dutch apple pie. Sounds good about now. Um, yeah, you can send the recipe for the corn casserole. Absolutely. Love to try a lot of different things. Um, let me tell you about, and I appreciate that, Allison. Let me tell you about some of the guests that are coming up. If you weren't aware, tomorrow night we've got a really terrific guest that's coming up. Christopher Scott. Christopher Scott is a legendary actor, theater director, and uh, theater teacher as well. And uh, he's extraordinary, and he's very excited to be here. And you've probably seen him in a lot of different productions over the years. He's with us tomorrow night live here exclusively on the Jim Master Show Live Thursday night. Really exciting. That's my birthday show, September 24th. It's going to be really cool. And with that, these fine gentlemen are going to be with us from the Temptations, the Drifters, the Ford Tops, and the Platters, the voices of classic soul. And they're going to perform for us as well. We're going to have great conversations about their time with all of those legendary groups. Uh, these gentlemen are legends, and they're going to be here this Thursday, September 24th, for our special Gym Master Show Live birthday show. It's going to be cool. Hopefully we'll have cake. <laughs> I wish I could share cake with all of you on my birthday this Thursday. But again, the voices of Classic Soul. It's hard to believe the birthday's only two days away, or not two. Yeah, right? Yeah, I can't believe it. This today's the 22nd, two days away. Whew. I'll actually have to check with Christine Clifton because she, she knows better than me when my birthday is because she's been counting the days down <laughs> and doing a fine job of it. So they're here on Thursday, the Voices of Classic Soul. Google them. They're amazing if you want to learn about them before they come on. On Friday, my phenomenal friend, he's a brilliant actor in some of your favorite TV dramas and so much more. Um, don't be fooled by that cool look he's got there. He's got a heart of gold. He's a great guy. And uh, that's a cool shot. I love it with the guitar. He's a brilliant uh, singer and actor, performer. Demo is going to be here on Friday. Then on Saturday, not only an extraordinary and beautiful story, but a beautiful person and a beautiful soul and a brilliant R&B sensation. This is Lady Bane. She's a former Detroit police officer. She's got an amazing story and she's got a brilliant voice. She is here exclusively on Saturday night. It's going to be a great Saturday night of an inspirational story, phenomenal music, and great conversation as we continue to bring back the lost art of conversation. Lady Bane is going to be here on Saturday. Just some of our great guests. And again, on Monday, Michael Longoria is going to be here from the Midtown Men, from Jersey Boys, and so much more. I'm excited. Uh, I've known him through the Midtown Men and through public television, and I'm so excited that he's going to be here as well. So uh, great comments coming in here. We'll wrap things up just in a second. You were lifting three-tier metal shelving unit uh, front steps, pulled the muscle. Yeah, well, that happens. You were trying to do something and got injured. So just uh, lay low. You don't have to dance to our theme music tonight. You just chill out, relax, put up your feet. Uh, you have plenty of time to dance to our theme music, Jenna Zen. Last night you commented with Global Lovity in place of just writing Lovity. I liked it. We do need Global Lovity. Yes, we do, especially after the conversation tonight, hearing of the Global uh, Service Institute. A terrific show. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. I will look for that recipe. The family will love it. The corn casserole, we sure will. Christine's got it down. Yes, Jim, countdown is in two days. <laughs> With uh, the birthday and the voices of classic soul. You got it, Christine. Thursday. Good night, Jim, and all the loveties to you as well, Marilyn. 
in Wichita, Kansas. Continue to spread the word. Tell everybody we're on every night. We've got amazing shows. Uh, we work a lot of, we work very hard behind the scenes. I was going to say a lot of hard hours, but it is actually putting all these together, uh, putting all the dots together to make sure we have great shows that uh, make a difference for you and your family, whether you watch live or in the archives. And uh, I hope you enjoy them. I truly hope you're enjoying all the effort and everything that we're doing here on the Gym Master Show Live because it's a blessing to do this. I want to give you uh, another quick glance at the website so you have it there. Check it out. Don't forget to check out the app that Rita talked about as well. Globalserviceinstitute.org. There it is again. We've showed it several times this evening for you. Globalserviceinstitute.org. Extraordinary extraordinary opportunity and entity um, to make a difference in our world. And Rita is the chair. So, so perfect. All right, gang, if you missed an episode of the Gym Master Show Live, as we always say, you know where to go. Want to watch this again? Want to share this link with your friends, family, colleagues? All the past episodes of the Gym Master Show Live are right there for you at YouTube at Gym Masters TV. I am your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, we took care of business. Uh, we thank again our phenomenal guest, dear friend Rita Cosby. She was extraordinary tonight. Really a blessing to have on the show. And again, um, we will have her back. That is for sure. We will definitely have her back. Uh, really, really cool. Good stuff. Just showing you again. We're showing you how you can get in contact with the Global Service Institute.org. Person with a lot of spunk, heart, and soul, and I absolutely love that. All right, gang, a couple of things we always like to do when we remember to. <laughs> put smiles on people's faces and uh, try to put one on yours. I know it's not always easy to do that, but if you do that, again, that's a pay it forward uh, segment or pay it forward thing to do. Um, and of course, find your Zen place, Mine is the ocean growing up along the coast here in the Northeast, the East Coast of the United States, uh, my Zen place. It's also one with love, loved ones, too. It's, I'm very family-oriented and friend-oriented, so when uh, we're with relatives and family time and everything, that's very Zen for me. Uh, music is Zen for me. Uh, reading, writing, creating, and the ocean is very Zen. And lots of levity to all of you. As we always say, lots of levity to all of our loveties here watching around the world on the Gym Masters Show Live. All right, gang. And yes, if you're wondering where your character's here, our characters we usually show, yeah, Gilligan is here with love from Bob Denver's fabulous wife, Dream of Denver, when we did that episode. She sent this beautiful, beautiful gift of Gilligan and uh, Silver and Jimmy... Yep, George is here. I know you guys love the George Burns. George Burns is here. <laughs> He's been listening. He has been riveted to this amazing conversation all night long. He says good night to you as well. So does Jeannie. Again, the show's to put a smile on everybody's faces. So Jeannie's in the bottle. You see her in there? She's blinking at you. She says, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> Silver's here. I know you guys love these characters. So I want to let you know they're here and they've been watching. There's Silver. Got him on a TV shoot when we were in Switzerland. There you go. And the one that puts smiles on people's faces. There we go. There's your friend Jimmy. He says hello as well. How can you not smile at a face like that, right? And, of course, with love, aloha, Dream of Denver, uh, my dear friend who was a guest on our show, wife of Bob Denver, wonderful actress, radio station owner, Dream of Denver, sent Gilligan along from famous Gilligan Island, Gilligan's Island TV sitcom series. And he was also Do in Dobie Gillis, too. All right, gang. Don't forget. I tell you, there's a lot of production elements to this show. Whew. Don't forget to relax, to breathe, to love one another, take care of one another. Love yourself as well. Breathe from the diaphragm. Uh, a lot of what we talked about, uh, volunteerism, giving back. No time than the present to do that. Um, you know, if you have passions that you want to pursue, do them now while you're able to, while you're healthy, while you have the interest, go for it. And we all try to do that. Not every day is perfect. Some days really aren't at all. But relax, breathe, take care of one another, and think about the blessings in your life. 
you know, uh, every time I see situations that happen to people where it's not always a beautiful situation, I doubly count my blessings. I feel for the person, I try to help the person, but I doubly count uh, my blessings as well. So you do the same, gang, all right? As best as you can. I know sometimes it's hard, but at least try to relax, take time for yourself. Okay, and uh, thanks for spending the time with us. Yes. Oh, yeah, the family uh, The family is all set for the birthday. Some people are asking about that. Absolutely. Linda, thank you very much. Uh, good night, Mr. Levity. Good night, Levities. Thank you very much. You sent the recipe for the corn casserole. You are awesome, Allison. Uh, I made more pictures of your life. Cool. The screenshots from our show. I love that, Allison. Thank you. Thank you, Jim and crew, for all these terrific shows. Good night, Jim, and all the Levities. Global Levity. That's exactly what it is. All right, we're going to wrap up here. Two hours and 40 minutes. Holy cow. I should have been paid by the word. <laughs> all right, gang. Doing this out of the, the love of doing it all. Good night, Renee. We'll see you tomorrow as well. I love levity. Cool. So do I. And this is a lot of levity here on the uh, Jim Master Show Live for sure. YouTube, Facebook, everywhere you can find us. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you can as well. That's it. That's a wrap. I think we took care of everything. Blessings again to our phenomenal guest, Rita Cosby. Blessings to you and yours all around the world for watching this show. If this is the first time you've got a taste of our show, 20 weeks, night after night, some 140 plus episodes already. And we're fine tuning, we're growing. And with a worldwide and faithful audience of levities and new people checking us out and joining us all the time, it's uh, pretty cool. If this is your first time, we welcome you. We'll uh, constantly aim to bring you good product and content here on our series, blending in some of my professional aptitude with whatever goes on. And the Wi-Fi and the internet, anything can happen, as it does everywhere, it seems. So keep your fingers crossed for that all the time. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. That's a good way to wrap. This feels like family. Perfect. That's how I aim for things like this, and that's how I am generally. So um, beautiful way to end, beautiful way to wrap. To everybody on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, watching around the world, thank you. We are family. We are family. should play that, right? But then you get into copyright, and it becomes tricky. <laughs> All right, gang, we're going to play our theme. Jen, do not get up. Jen Barry, do not get up. I know the urge for you is to get up and start dancing, jumping around in your living room because you love the theme music to our intro and our outro of the Gym Master Show Live and our Gym Masters singers and orchestra. Do not get up. You can maybe wiggle your finger like you're conducting, but you've injured your leg. Your host is telling you, I'm not your doctor, but I am the host responsible for this uh, custom theme we have for our show. Do not get up. <laughs> There's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow, right? So I think they sing that in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I think. There's always tomorrow. The sun will come out tomorrow, Marvin Hamlish. Beautiful stuff. It is the Lovety family. You got it. Absolutely, Linda in Florida. Good night, gang. We're going to wrap up. I know I've said that 14 times. Love you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Rita, our wonderful, illustrious guest. Again, uh, I will love having her back soon. She is absolutely amazing, as are all of you. One last comment coming in. I promise I won't dance. Bummer. Yes, you got to take care of the leg that's injured. You can dance Maybe a couple of days from now. Rest that leg so you can really dance extra when you're able to. Just wiggle your hands. Pretend you're conducting the orchestra or something. Here it comes. Here's your theme. Cue the singers and orchestra, folks. The Gym Master Show theme's coming up. We will be here tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Special guest, Christopher Scott, actor, theater director, extraordinaire, and a theater teacher, and so much more. He's going to share some really fantastic stories and, and so much more with us. And we hope you're here. If you're not, you can always see these shows in the archives on YouTube. To everybody watching and still with us, good night. We love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. You be well. You take care. Have a great day wherever you are. 
around the world. Gym Master signing off on the Gym Master Show Live. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>